right now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that anything that I share with you tonight is given to you as an example, but if you don't put the work in, that may mean that you may not get that revenue or you may not get that income. So we're going to make sure that we're understanding that, right? And I, sometimes people skip right over the income disclaimer. I do not want to skip over the income disclaimer because I want you to know that this is a business and the amount of income that you earn is dependent on your own efforts. It is a system. And that system is based on three required trainings. This is one of the three. So if you haven't already attended a new unfranchise owner training, you're gonna to want to make sure that you've done that. You wanna make sure that you go to a regular basic five too, because I'm gonna be streamlining this a little bit and I'm gonna be putting a Nutrimetric spin on it. But each of the unfranchise owners, no matter what their major, whether they're majoring in Nutrimetrics or whether they're majoring in Motives or whether they're majoring in Personal Care, whether they're major, majoring in Conquer Entertainment, they all have to know the Market America fundamentals and you really learn the fundamentals of building an unfranchised business at the basic five. So let's talk about that, right? We're, that's what we're going to be talking about throughout this evening. You also want to make sure that you attend an executive coordinator certification training. Now, the requirement is that you have to attend an ECCT training within 28 days of completing the pay cycle. But I don't want you to wait until you're within 28 days of completing the pay cycle. Or if you've already attended one, I don't want you to think that you only have to attend one and done. You should be going to those at least once a year at a minimum because things are constantly changing. I recommend that you do a new one franchise owner training and a basic five training at least once a quarter, not just for you, but because you're going to be going with your team. You're going to be taking your new team members with you, right? And so then you want to make sure that you're staying current with all the policies and procedures at the ECCT. So what is the basic five that we're talking about? Well, it's really breaking down the business fundamentals into five main categories. And we'll go through each of those categories this evening. We're going to talk about attitude and knowledge. We're going to talk about creating your goal statement. We're going to talk about retailing, prospecting, recruiting, and sponsoring, which is in essence opening new accounts, and then following up and the ABC pattern. And we'll talk about follow up in terms of customers as well as business partners. Now, as I go through each of these slides, even the ones that are right out of the Market America uh, basic five, I'm gonna put some examples on it for building the attitude and knowledge of an NC and building the attitude and knowledge of an HP. Talking about setting goals for an NC, and talking about setting the goals for an HP. So we're gonna customize this based on both NCs and HPs. And of course, we'll start with the attitude and knowledge section. Now, those of you that have attended an NC training, know that we kick off the training every single time by showing about 11 minutes of this video from a TED talk. I'm not going to show it to you tonight. We just don't have time. But I would like for you to write down, if you haven't already seen it, make sure that you go to TED.com, TED or you can also find it on YouTube, and look up the Simon Sinek video of How Great Leaders Inspire Action. Because what he talks about in there is really a summary of his book, which you could also read. He wrote a book called Starting With Why. And we kick off the NC training because it's with, with this video because it's really important for people to understand why a business is the way it is and why your business is the way that it is. And oftentimes when people start off a brand new business, whether it's a division within Market America, whether it's a traditional brick and mortar business, no matter what it is, most people start off by talking about what they do. They don't always talk about why they do it. And what Simon Sinek talked about in Start With Why is it's really the why that gets people to take action. It's not the what, right? And he talks about the fact that people do business with people who believe in what they believe. And we wanna find people that believe what we believe. But when people are buying from you, whether they're buying a, as a customer or as a business partner, they don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. So when you're talking to somebody about why you started your Nutrimetrics business or your Market America business, leading with the why is what grabs people's emotions. Leading with the why is what gets people to want to take action. If we only talk about the company and we only talk about the products and we don't talk about why they're important or why somebody might need the products, then we're missing a big piece of the puzzle and we may end up struggling. So starting with that video or reading that book might be an important piece of homework for your business. You'll hear me talk later on about our daily activities. And one of our daily activities is reading for at least 15 minutes every day or listening to an audio. I would put on your list of reading materials and listening materials, start with why by Simon Sinek and his TED talk video. 
Now that I've said that, let's talk about why Market America and why Nutrametrics. Why is it important for people to understand what our business has to offer and why they would want to start a business with us, partner with us, right? Well, the strength of the Market America business model is this foundation, the unfranchised system where it's completely systemized. systematized. We don't have to create anything from scratch. We don't have to go out and find all of our own products. We have exceptional quality. We have incredible product development. We have a global fulfillment system with operations in multiple countries. We have continuous improvement, a commitment to success, and everything is standardized. Just like if you were to open a, a franchise like McDonald's, you would go to McDonald's University. We don't have McDonald's University, but we have the unfranchised university and that is standardized training no matter where you go in the world that has a market america business whether it's market uk market australia market mexico market canada what wherever you go where market america has operations we have standardized trainings through something called our global meeting training seminar system we also have the most incredible compensation plan and we're going to talk about this in detail but we're going to talk about especially in neutrometrics we're going to talk about the 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 um the lucrative, uh, I'm trying to say, say the word lucratability, right? We're gonna talk about the retail profit and how lucrative that can be. Because sometimes when people are going to a regular Market America training, they focus so much on the commissions because the commissions are very strong and the commissions do lead to residual income, which is why we call it the two to three year plan. But we want to make sure that we don't discount the power of our retail systems as well because you can create a very significant income for yourself via retail right so we're going to talk about the difference between retail profit and commissions we're going to talk about for a practitioner how we could provide staff education and incentives we're going to talk about how for a practice we could bring in revenue whether they're a small practice or a large group and how we could help to really change healthcare with the income that we're talking about now if we talk about market america's overall sales i want you to understand that this is not a small company in fact since the company's inception in 1992 the company's done over eight billion dollars of accumulated sales Sales. And of that, about 2.1 billion was paid back to the unfranchised owners in retail profit, and another 2.1 billion was paid back in combined commissions. So our unfranchised owners in the past 26 years have been paid out over $4.2 billion, right? So the standardized system is proven, and it's a business model that works, and it shows uh, through all of the million dollar club earners that we have hundreds of people who have created an extra million dollars or more for themselves. What this um, screen does not show, however, is the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that were able to add additional revenue every month, sometimes every week to their business that helped pay for their car payments, helped pay for their mortgage, maybe helped a mom stay at home with their kids or helped a dad stay home with their kids, helped give people more financial options. And oftentimes people's lives change before they've gotten to the point where they've earned a million dollars with the company, right? Imagine what an extra three to $5,000 a month could do for your family. Imagine then once you get to the point where an extra $10,000 a month comes into your family, would you have different choices to make at that time? Would you be able to travel more with your family? Would you be able to stay home more with your family? Would you be able to do more fun things and spend more time together? It's not just about creating millions of dollars, but it's about quality of life and the, correct, the kind of lifestyle that the business income created through the unfranchised can offer to our unfranchised owners and to our health professionals. So when we talk about why Market America, let's also talk about why Nutrimetrics, since we're talking about this Nutrimetricized version of the basic five, right? In the Nutrimetrics training, we talk about the fact that we have an incredible mission and it's a mission that we can get very excited about. We want to change healthcare. We know that practitioners are looking for options. We know that patients are struggling with their health. We know that we have a sick care system and not a true healthcare system. And most practices that have gone through the traditional protocols, they don't talk about wellness, right? Our wellness benefits that we are offered in most of our tr traditional treatment plans are really things like mammograms, pap smears, colonoscopies, things that are more early detection and not really about promoting healthy lifestyles. Yet when we can take people and help them understand how what they eat, how they sleep, what type of exercise they get, how they deal with stress impacts their overall health, right? Now the patients are empowered to not only 
prevent possible problems in the future, but maybe not have to be on as many medications as they had if they would have just followed the traditional protocols. So we want to be able to help our health professionals understand the role of lifestyle and educate them on lifestyle interventions they can introduce to their patients that bring revenue to their practice. So some of the themes that we talk about at the MC trainings fit very well into the attitude section of the basic five and the knowledge section, right? We want to make sure that we can talk about the power of the internet and how because of the internet, people have access to information they never had access to before. And as a result of that, everybody goes to Dr. Google, right? When they go to Dr. Google, they're looking for more wellness options. And then they go to their doctor and they say, what can I do instead of, or is there anything I can do to prevent? Or is there any way that I can lose weight, right? And so they ask their practitioner for wellness options and we have those solutions for them. We'll also talk about in the NC training, and the more that you hear this, and the more that you go back and you review the materials, the more you can talk about it. That is enhancing your knowledge. You'll be able to talk through these themes with your potential customers and your potential uh, business partners. So we're gonna talk about junk science in the marketplace and quality products, and how do you differentiate between a good quality supplement and the junk that's in the marketplace? And how does this play into the economy of healthcare? Right? The Nutrimetrics division was launched in 2004 and it was launched as a need because we had about 400 health professionals who had partnered with our company because they loved the products. Yet many of them were so uh, busy in their practices that they didn't have time to really learn our business model. So we came up with this idea. It was actually Dennis Franks, our executive vice president of sales, while talking to J.R. Ridinger, the, the founder and chairman of our company. Um, they were talking about how they wanted to be able to provide solutions for health professionals and find a way to get the training to them. So they developed a Nutrimetrics division with a separate brand for health professionals to offer in their practice, but they also developed the idea of having a Nutrimetrics consultant. And the Nutrimetrics consultant is really a, a, a UFO, an unfranchised owner, just like you and me, that's been trained on how to specifically work with health professionals to implement the products and services offered by Nutrimetrics into the practice. So the, the program grew from really nothing in 2004 to over $40 billion a year in sales in a relatively short period of time. We've only been around 14 years. When you compare us to other companies that sell directly to doctors, the health and wellness products, many of them, the, the top players in that industry, they've been around for 50 or more years, and some of them average about $25 million a year in sales. We surpassed that in our first five years. Why? What is propelling our growth? Well, number one, our products work. And because the products work, patients reorder, compliance levels go through the roof, people seek out our products actively, right? But in addition to that, we meet many needs of our practitioners. We integrate several billion dollar industries. We have supplements and natural products. We have weight management. We have genetic testing, right? Plus we have all the implementation tools to teach a health professional how to implement the products into their practice. Now, Market America is an internet marketing company, and they've invested a ton of money in having the best tools available on all of our websites. And the Nutrimetrics.com website for our health professionals is no different. So when our health professionals partner with us, they get a Nutrimetrics.com site, which helps to minimize inventory, reduce hassles of having to drop ship constantly all these products by, by packaging them up themselves and sending them to their patients. Our company can do that directly for them, right? So we have all of these tools that are available and that's what's helping to propel Nutrimetrics well ahead of some of these other companies that have been doing this for much longer that we have. Plus we have you and you are a committed group. You're kind of our volunteer army that's out there promoting our products because you've experienced them right? You've experienced a change in your own health after using the products. And when that happens and you have your own personal story, right? And you share that story with other people, there's no better advertising than that. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight, especially when we get to the retail section, is the importance of telling the story, right? So some of the other themes that we want to make sure that we're aware of in our attitude and knowledge section is the fact that people don't get as much nutrients as they should from their food. In fact, because of farming trends, the, the a nutrient content of food today is very different than the nutrient content of the same foods 50 years ago. And then, you know, the, what's in products is very different. There's so many things that are in quote, health products that shouldn't be there, like artificial chemical dyes, binders, fillers, excipients, that when we talk to customers about that, they may already be using a product, but do they really know what's in it? And do they really know if it's a good product for them? So if we can take this, this concept that 
people are already sold on supplementation. They need to supplement because they're not getting what they need from diet alone. They know supplements are supposed to be good, but they don't really know what to take. And they are kind of scratching their head as to why is their doctor not the one giving them this information or why is their health professional not giving them this information? And then we can look at the health professional side and say, well, maybe it's just because they're not really well educated on, on wellness products and supplements. Well, if we can go in and train them on wellness products and supplements, now we have the health professionals providing the services that the patients are looking for, and it's a win-win, and it brings revenue to the practice, right? So what is the difference between success and failure? Going back to the attitude and knowledge section from the main basic five. It really comes down to the individual who succeeds simply does what the individual who failed did not do or was not willing to do. So at NC Training, I do share with you in the mindset segment this picture, which is hanging in the Market America corporate office. And it kind of goes through and it talks about what are some of the things that hold people back, right? And I'm not going to get into the whole mindset segment with you now that we actually have a video of that that we're going to put up on YouTube shortly uh, from one of the NC trainings when that was recorded. But what I want you to be aware of is when we have this system that's been proven by hundreds and thousands of people to work, why might it not work for one person? Well, maybe they're not following the system. Maybe they think their way is better. Maybe they're afraid of failure and they don't really take action. Or maybe they're afraid of how their life will look, how much more work they might have if they're successful and what that would mean and what kind of changes they might have to have. Sometimes it comes down to not necessarily a lack of belief in the company or the products. Sometimes it comes down to a lack of belief in ourselves that holds us back. So one of the things that we need to do when we're talking about creating the attitude and knowledge of a successful unfranchise owner is not only learning the business, but learning about ourselves and what drives us and what limits us, right? So I love this um, idea that attitude precedes success because you, you have to have the right attitude before the money comes. It's not what you say, it's how you say that. And you'll learn that in the Simon Sinek video as well. If you go back and watch that video from Simon Sinek on how leaders inspire action, he talks about the fact that many people um, will follow somebody that's really passionate about what they're talking about, even if they don't know what they're talking about. I also show a video in the NC training from a woman named Amy Cuddy, and she talks about the fact that it's when you're interviewing somebody, it's not necessarily the mechanics of what they say. It's, are they excited about it? Are they enthusiastic about it? Are they passionate about what they're talking about? And so the more you learn about what's offered to you in Market America and Nutrimetrics, and the more you get excited about that, the more you hear the quote all the time, your vibe attracts your tribe, the more that you will attract the people to you that you need for your business, whether that's a customer or whether that's a partner. So how do you develop the attitude and knowledge of a very successful on franchise owner? Well, you're going to listen to audios every day. You're going to schedule a call with your senior business partner at least once a week. You're going to participate in conference calls and webinars like this on an ongoing basis. And Sarah Tegender, our director of sales, has done an amazing job of putting together this whole video series. And we have so many different videos to pick from. If you go into our Nutrimetrics Facebook group and you look at the events section, she has events on retailing and events on, you know, so, on so many different topics, call workshops and staff one, two, threes. And she, she has a Dropbox link with all the recordings of those that she's making available to everybody. Watch as many of them as you can. Now I know your time is limited and we're going to talk about time management, right? But you should be carving out some time every day to make sure that you're listening to audios or participating in these webinars and corings. And the beautiful thing about them is you can listen to them pretty much from your phone, no matter where you are. I listened to one today being totally transparent with you while I was in the shower, right? I have a waterproof case on my phone. Makes it really nice. I can just Pop it right up on the shelf in the shower and I can be listening to it while I'm in the shower. And you're constantly finding ways to feed your mind with positive information about business, positive information about our products, positive information about mindset and growth. And one of the things that I love most about this business is the positive and um, people that you meet that are willing to share their success habits with you or their success stories with you. Where do you meet them? You meet them at our local seminars. You meet them through your GMTSS. You meet them by attending events. So you wanna make sure that you have your tickets to the upcoming events. Here's the thing, guys. If you treat your business like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. And if you think of what things are hobbies, boating, horses, skiing, 
right? These things cost money. They don't make you money. So you don't want to treat your business like a hobby because that's how your business ends up costing you money. Instead, you need to develop the mindset of a business owner and you need to make sure that you are taking the time to schedule in these activities into your daily day. Think of what you do when you work for somebody else, right? You don't really say, I can't do that today. I have to do something else. No, if you know that there's something that needs to get done, a deadline for work for somebody else, you make sure it gets done. But when it's your own business, it's a lot easier to push it off and say, well, I can do that tomorrow. Well, that's treating it like a hobby. We want to make sure that we don't do that right? In the NC training, I do talk about mindset. Some of us have beliefs that are limiting. We might things, think things like, this will work for other people, but it won't work for me, right? We have to spend time getting rid of those filters, those lies that other people have told us. And we need to remember that we can do this. This business was created for the average person. It was created just for people just like you and just like me. And there's thousands and thousands of success stories. And the more you spend time with those success stories, the more that you hear all the I pulled myself up from the bootstrap stories, my the rags to riches stories from the Pizza Hut waitress that was working part-time that built her business to multi-million dollar business, to the paralegal that had tried so many other things and it it didn't work none of the other things worked for her this was I think her 11th or 12th business that she tried and she finally got it right right but along the way she worked on her mindset along the way she shifted away from all of the filters that says this won't work and she started thinking about because of reprogramming her mind with those audios and reading the books and feeding the mind with all the positive things she reprogrammed to you know what I do deserve this. I am going to make this work. It is going to be easy for me because I have a system to follow, right? So we need to make sure that we're constantly programming our mind, not only and our attitude with business ideas, but ideas about ourselves and that we can do it. Because here's the thing, going back to Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right, right? This is all about developing the attitude of a successful Market America on franchise owner, a successful Nutrimetrics consultant, or successful HP. All right, so what are your options to earn significant income in the outside world, outside of Market America? Well, can you work more hours? Can you get a second job? Can you go back to school? Can you invest money? Can you own your own business? Guys, the whole thing about any one of those options, they all require more money than building an unfranchise. They all require more time than building an unfranchise. You have something really unique in your hands where you can create a significant income on a part-time basis without the large startup costs of a traditional business or of a franchise, right? The average franchise is $147,000 to purchase. Plus you have to pay ongoing royalties to the franchisor, right? You don't have to do any of that with Market America. You don't have to go back to school and get another degree. Although you do have to go to the trainings through the GMTSS, but it's not gonna take you six to 10 years of education to do that. In fact, if you're following our system and, and you're working on a very part-time basis, it's a two to three year plan to get you to a six figure income on part-time hours. So we're building ongo ongoing income, which is very different than what most people are used to. Most people are used to trading time for money. They, their money grows linearly. They can kind of project out on a path. When, when I was a school teacher, I would actually, at the back of my contract that I got at every contract period, it would literally show years of service and the salary. It, it, there was nothing I could do to earn more money as a teacher, unless I went into coaching or something like that, which meant more time after school. There was no way for me to create true wealth as a teacher unless I saved a lot of my money and invested it. But I made my living expenses pretty much. I didn't make much more than my living expenses. It was really hard to save. With ongoing income, it's so different because you leverage your time. Your money grows exponentially. Your income continues even if you need to stop working, at least temporarily. We heard so many stories when you, when you start meeting people through the unfranchised business, you'll hear of people who had significant health challenges that couldn't work for years, but because they had spent two to three years growing their unfranchised, their business continued to grow while they took care of their own health. Their income continued because the ongoing uh, residual income provided through the unfranchised system. That allows them to create true wealth. That allows them to have time freedom because even though the income increases, it's still a part-time business. Even if you're full-time as an unfranchised owner, that doesn't mean 60 to 80 hours a week like most people that are uh, very successful in traditional business. There's a lot of people out there that are very wealthy with zero time freedom to enjoy it, right? 
the unfranchise allows us to create a lifestyle. And the best way to predict your future is to create it, to map it out. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here. The formula for doing this is making sure that the way that you spend your time is quality time. See, quality time is spent with the right people. It can be really easy to fall into the trap of wanting something more for somebody than they want it for themselves. And if they're not willing to follow the system, they're not um, somebody that you should really spend a lot of your time with, right? So if you have people right now on your team that are raring to go, they're excited, they're ready, they want to learn, spend your time with them. If you have people on your team that you feel like you need to drag them along to everything, that you need to constantly convince them what to do, they're not the right people to spend a lot of your time with. It doesn't mean that they're not a valuable asset to your team. It doesn't mean that you cast them aside and never talk to them again, right? You just spend most of your time, your quality time, to get duplicatable growth and volume and income, right? They're all, it's, a, it's the formula, quality time equals duplicatable growth equals volume equals income. That comes from making sure you're spending your time with the right people who are, quote, the go-nows. And if you don't have any go-nows on your team right now, it's okay. Make that your first goal to find some, and we'll talk about how. We wanna make sure that we're spending our time wisely, but only focusing on the result-producing activities. And this is really hard for people in the beginning, especially if they've worked for someone else most of their lives and haven't worked for themselves, right? So let's boil it down to what are the result-producing activities of this business? It's using and sharing the products, right? Selling the products to other people that generate retail profit for you and that generates the BV commissions for you. Sharing the business that creates the duplication and the ultimate leverage. Implementing and sharing the shopping annuity. Capturing dollars of things that you're already spending money on and funneling it back through the business and selling tickets. It's really not about selling the tickets. It's about getting the people trained so that they know how to do result producing activities, right? These are the four main result producing activities. Anything that doesn't fall into these four categories is not something really worth spending your time. Now, sometimes people will think that they're spending a lot of time on their business. They're reading a lot. They are studying about all of the products. They are spending that time learning. Well, notice learning about the products isn't a result producing activity. Using the products and selling the products is, but if you are an ever vest, if, if you are an endless student constantly trying to study, 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 but not doing these result producing activities, your business is not going to grow. And that's why I shared and recommend that you do the, do, do the learning while you're doing something else. Listen to an audio while you're doing the dishes. Listen to an audio while you're driving in your car. Listen to audio while you're in the waiting room waiting for an appointment, right? Because by doing that, that's collapsing time where you can get the non-result producing activities done and still free up time for doing the result producing activities in your business. Now, making sure that we understand the knowledge and have the knowledge about the business is also making sure that we understand what tools are available to us. So we're gonna go through what some of the tools and websites are that you wanna be aware of. Of course, you wanna be aware of your unfranchised back office. Take some time and dig around back here. You can't break anything. You wanna make sure that you know what tools are available for you. And guys, they change things all the time. So you wanna make sure that you're constantly making sure you're logging in, looking at what's new on downloads, making sure that you're aware of what's going on. We have an about market American shop.com viral PDF that you can download from the downloads area. And what this is, is a living, breathing document that you can send to somebody when they want to learn more about market America. And if you'll notice on this page, I hope you can see my mouse moving. All of these little videos right here have a play button on them. And when somebody clicks on them, it's going to take them right to a video that's embedded in this library. So sending the about MA document or the about Nutrimetrics document, which does the same thing if you're talking specifically to to a health professional or somebody that you'd like to partner with your business for Nutrimetrics, then you can give them the Nutrimetrics focused one. But when somebody asks me, what can you send me about your business? It's one of these tools that I send them. Now, I will preface that by saying, I don't send it to them right away. I want to be able to talk to them first. I want to be able to to have a dialogue back and forth with them. I want to be able to engage in conversation with them, not just send them a document and let them learn about it on their own. But sometimes you get a couple of those people that are so busy. They're like, I just need to, I'll, I'll read it at night when the kids are sleeping, please send it to me. If they insist on me sending something and I can't get an appointment with them right away, this is what I'm going to send them. Knowing that it might overwhelm them, right? But if it does overwhelm them, they're not the right person anyway. So remember the, the saying, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person and you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. 
if somebody's really pushing for something to send them, I think this is a great start, both the Nutrimetrics one and or the Market America one. I wouldn't send them both, but if it's, I'm talking to somebody about Nutrimetrics, that's the one that I would send them. If I'm sending, if I'm talking to them about the shopping annuity or Market America or one of the other brands, I would send them this one. You also wanna make sure that you're familiar with the Getting Started Guide, which is available on downloads. Now keep in mind, we have a Getting Started Guide in Market America, and we also have a Getting Started Guide in Nutrimetrics. So if you're focusing on the Nutrimetrics division, you do wanna go through the Nutrimetrics Getting Started Guide, but you also wanna make sure that you're familiar with what's in your Market America Getting Started Guide. Because if we're looking at kind of a course outline, right? Everybody needs to understand the Market America business. That's the foundation of the business, no matter what major you focus on. Then once you have your foundation, you add in some of your advanced courses, which are your majors, whether you're focusing on motives or whether you're focusing on Nutrimetrics. Nutrimetrics is your major. You're gonna build upon the main getting started guide by adding in information from the Nutrimetrics started guide. And this will help you go through all the things that you need to do to build your business. Here's your commitment level. You wanna make sure that you enter your dates in the calendar for upcoming events. And it talks to you about what your result producing activities are. I'll commit to this. You should be committing at least for a year to a business plan. When you're working with somebody, if they're not willing to, to commit for a year, they're not really the right person. This is not a get rich quick kind of thing. It's not, you're gonna open your account today and money's gonna fall from the sky like manna from heaven. It is a business that needs to be built. It's a two to three year plan to follow. If they follow it for a full 12 months and they don't see any results, they probably didn't follow the plan. So we need to make sure that they're going through the checklist and committing to the result producing activities. We also wanna talk about getting people to follow the master UFO program because we all can probably understand the fact that there are gonna be some people that open their account because they love the products and they wanna be able to buy them at unfranchised costs. That doesn't mean that they have an intention to build the business. So the people that have an intention of building the business, they're the ones that are shooting for the master UFO program. And they've recently restructured the master UFO program to make it even easier than ever for people to attain. So really what does the master UFO program entail? It, you just fill out your shopping annuity assessment to make sure that you know what you're already using in your household that you can transfer to your Market America brands or partner store brands. You want to make sure that you are purchasing enough product for your family to be using in, the, in, in your house or if it's a health professional in the office. So it's a minimum of $1,500 of BV per quarter. In three months, it's $500 a month of product that can be used both for you or for your customers. Now, if you're following the plan that we're talking about today, that should not be an issue for you. And then also generating a minimum of $1,500 worth of partner store purchases. Now, that might sound like a lot, but I want you to think about how much do you spend outside of your own business right now at the grocery store, at Walmart, at Target, on clothes, on things for the house, on pet food. All of that food for, for your animals and for your family, it can add up. And do you travel? Do you buy airfare? Do you book hotels? Do you rent cars? I mean, if one car rental a month can equal your $1,500 per quarter that you need before you even add on all the things that you need for your house, right? And then you need to open one new account for a business partner. So that's really all it takes to become a master UFO. We should all be striving to be master UFOs on an ongoing basis. Make sure you're familiar with that. Log into your back office and you can see where you are in the process by clicking on the master UFO program report under the management reports. You also want to make sure that you go in periodically and take the basic five diagnostic assessment. What this is going to do is help point out where your strong areas are in your business as well as your weak areas. And if you're an NC, I encourage you to do this, do, take a basic five for your practices as well. Sit down and think about, are they doing this? Are they doing that? Are they doing this? And of course, we don't expect all of our HPs to build the full unfranchised business, right? If they're an HP1, they're just focusing on the retail model. Um, but if they're an HP executive, they should be looking at making sure that they're hitting the basic five and we can go through with them and show them what that is. Right, so we have all these different systems that come together and where do you learn about them? Where do you get the ongoing training about them? Well, you wanna make sure that you're going for all of the challenges, right? Because the challenges provide that track to run on to make sure that you're hitting all the little tick marks along the way to success. So you're, you should be going to local seminars quite regularly, at least 
to a quarter, I would say, uh, depending on where you are. I know some people live rurally and there's not a lot of them in their area. Try to get with one at a minimum once a quarter. Some areas have them every month. If they have them every month, get to them every month. When you have a local seminar, make sure you do the challenge. If you have a regional convention coming up, make sure you do the challenge. We have a Nutrimetrics challenge that we issue for every international convention and every world conference. The, new, the university major challenges, like the Nutrimetrics challenge, usually equate to about half of the chairman's challenge, right? So if you've already accomplished the Nutrimetrics challenge, why not then strive to go for the chairman's challenge? It all depends on how fast do you wanna grow. It's all up to you. This is your business. You get to decide how long does you, do you want it to take to get you from where you are now to what your goals are. If you really want to get on the fast track to achieving your goals, the challenges are a way to do it. Okay. So when the chair, where do you find the chairman's challenge? Well, you go into downloads, you go to the general business building area and you click on challenges and you should be able to find all the different challenges there. We also have the Nutrimetrics challenge under the Nutrimetrics downloads area. Now, you want to make sure that you're also familiar with our unfranchised media um, app. So in your back office under downloads, go to UF Media, and there you'll have audios that you can download. Uh, I'll give you a little secret. They're in the process of revamping this whole uh, back area, and they're going to be combining unfranchised training documents and all the tools that used to be on unfranchised training into the unfranchised media app. It's going to be so much easier to search. It's going to be so much easier to find things. You don't have to try to remember, was that on unfranchise.com or is that on unfranchised training.com? Everything will be in the unfranchised media index. And uh, I think you're going to really love it. That'll be launching in not too long. Uh, I think maybe by the middle of December, it'll be ready for you to view but just be prepared for that. Um, in the meantime, make sure you go and see what's there. There's a ton of content there already. Uh, check it out, right? Also look at the Unfranchised Media app that you can access on mobile. It's, a, it's an app that you can download to your phone, allows you to search and stream audios with filters. So when you are in the shower and you wanna listen to something and you have your, water your waterproof case on or you're swimming laps or you're working out and running on the treadmill, the UF Media app is a great way for you to get that education while you're doing something else and really maximize your time. Um, and, and guys, let me just talk about this for a second because so many of you, I, I, I hear people, I'll, I'll be in the car, in the field, working with UFOs and they have talk radio on the, on the, the radio in their car. And I'm like, what are you doing? This stuff just stresses you out. You don't need to listen to the news. You need to be focusing on reprogramming your mind with positive stuff, not stressful stuff of everything that's going on. Um, you want to make sure that you're familiar with your website, your shop.com website, all of the other mini websites that you have. We all get access to all of them. So even if you don't focus on Motives Cosmetics, make sure that you're familiar with what's on the Motives Cosmetics website because you have no idea who you're going to meet tomorrow. And maybe you end up sitting down on a plane tomorrow next to a makeup artist. And showing her your shop.com site is one thing, but taking her to the Motives Cosmetics site where there's all the reviews about the products and so many great tips and techniques and uh, the Instagram feed is built in down to the bottom. You, you want to be able to share those things with people, but you can't do that if you don't know what you have. So part of your homework, make sure you look at your isotonics.com site. Make sure you look at tlsslim.com. Make sure you've set up your custom mini websites. Those are the sites where you can pick what you want the site to look like, pick what products are featured on the site, pick what uh, domain name it is there. Like the example there is a pet health website with mypethealthsolutions.com right? Um, and make sure that you're aware of your global site, because maybe you're sitting on a plane next to somebody from the UK, and we do operations and market United Kingdom. And so you now have a new friend in the United Kingdom, and you can grow your business there, right? Of course, also, you want to make sure these are those custom mini websites that I was just talking about. Of course, you also want to make sure that you know, and are familiar with the Nutrimetrics.com site. As NCs, we don't get a Nutrimetrics.com site, but our health professionals do. So we need to make sure that we are familiar with what is on Nutrimetrics.com to be able to share with our health professionals. Here's just a screen capture of where you set up your custom mini websites, right? And you wanna make sure that you get more information by going to Unfranchise.com. So there's the whole help and training section of Unfranchise.com. Now, depending on what your major is, you might wanna look at some other websites. Well, the Web Centers has their own site. Shop Financial has their own site. Nutrimetrics.com exists for other blogs and medias. You can go into that support area. I've already mentioned the Nutrimetrics.com website. You do want to make sure that you 
stay up to date with what's on there and how it changes as it evolves. As we're talking about other tools that can help you learn the business and gain more knowledge about your unfranchised business, Nutrimetrics has a YouTube channel. And on that channel, we have the Nutrimetrics University Major Overview. This was created to help an unfranchised owner learn how to explain the Nutrimetrics division to a potential health professional or a potential Nutrimetrics consultant. So it's only 15 minutes long, but that's one of the great things. If you know you're on your way to the grocery store and it's going to take you 15 minutes to get there, this might be something, even though it's a video, you can still listen to it in your car on, on the way there, right? We also have on our um, YouTube channel, we have videos about What's the benefits of having Nutrimetrics as part of your health professional practice? Why would a health professional want to attend a Nutrimetrics consultant training, right? We also have things for Nutrimetrics consultants. Why would somebody want to be a Nutrimetrics consultant? And what should they expect about going to an NC training? And why should every unfranchise owner attend an NC training? All of these tools are going to help you. And the more you listen to them, the more you'll be able to talk in these themes, right? You also want to make sure that you download your practice planning guide for Nutrimetrics consultants and your health professional implementation guide. Um, we already talked about the getting started guide for Nutrimetrics. If you take the getting started guide, the practice planning guide and the health professional implementation guide and you put them all in a binder and you carry them with you, right? You can't forget anything because there's checklists in there that say, okay, this is what you do when you're planning to call, up, call offices. And this is what you do when you find somebody that you wanna work with. Here's a, a pre-call worksheet that you can fill out. What can you find out about them by searching the, about them online? Then when you do get an appointment with them and there's tips in there on how to book the appointments, which we'll talk about in a few more minutes. But when you get an appointment with them, what do you do during that first meeting called the discovery meeting? And then how do you create a proposal for them once you know what they're looking for? And then how do you create an implementation strategy? It's all laid out for you. That's the beauty of the unfranchised. You don't have to create the wheel. Everything is laid out in a step-by-step -step format. And all you have to do is follow the system, right? And that ultimately leads to you participating in the management performance compensation plan. Now notice, it's not just called the commission plan. It is called the management performance compensation plan because what you're essentially doing is building a team and managing that team. You're helping to train your team. You're helping to make sure that your team is doing things properly. Just like if you were to own your own business and hire your staff, when you're finding partners to add to your MPCP, you only want to work with the best players. Sarah talks in the NC training about players only, right? We want to find people that are just like us, passionate about helping other people, committed to making a difference, and really excited about growing more. So what are the strengths of the management performance compensation plan? It is a proven business plan with immediate retail profits. You can, you can be in the black on day one of your business because you can buy products that you sell to end users and earn all of your money back and make profit. There's a volume search to infinity. There's so many companies out there that pay on levels and we are not a multi-level marketing company, but there's so many companies out there that pay on levels and they only pay down maybe four or five levels, maybe 10 max, Ours searches to infinity and 100% of the volume generated by the team underneath of you that you're managing benefits you and the people above you. Your business volume accrues for a full year, 365 days, as long as you are meeting your minimum accrual option requirements. And that's pretty much just having a standing monthly order where the products that you use or your customers use are being shipped to you on an automatic shipment order and you have your unfranchised management system every month and you fill out your sales receipts and your form 1000. We have an internet business volume, which that's the IBV plan. If you're buying from partner stores, which you should be because you use those things in your house all the time anyway, that also accrues for 365 days. We can uh, place the volume where we need it. You can assign the volume to one person per quarter that you are going to you're going to focus on them. You're going to say, I am going to help you for the next 90 days. And in order and to help you, I'm going to pick you and we're going to work together right? And the commissions are calculated weekly. We have the ability to earn more than your senior partners. This is really interesting because where else can you actually earn more than your boss, the person that hired you? You can own multiple business development centers. The business is a willable asset. I've met several unfranchised owners that inherited their business at a six-figure income from their parents, right? What a beautiful thing to be able to create a business that you can pass on 
to future generations. We have an organizational structure that creates a common vested interest. Anybody that's on your team, whether you've personally sponsored them or not, you can help them, you can reach out to them because the better they do, the more successful they become, the more successful you become. What other business do you know of where instead of being in competition with the people you work with, you actually, the more successful they are, the more successful you are. It's such a beautiful thing. I love this business so much. And traditional marketing, whether we're talking about real estate sales, whether we're talking about insurance sales, whether we're talking about traditional retail, it all tends to create this competition amongst each other because it's a horizontal structure. We flipped that on our side. We created this vertical structure that encourages teamwork and pays to make other people successful. And everybody gets credit 100% for any business volume created for the people that they help in their downline organization. Earning potential is not determined by position. You don't have to rush to get in at the top like so many of those network marketing companies out there where you see people starting a new company every year or two years because they have to be at the top. They have to get in first to make the money. That's not how it works with the unfranchised. Now, some people might be saying, well, where do the health professionals fit into this, right? Health professionals fit into the organization just like anyone else. So if you're an NC and you're building an unfranchised, maybe the first person that you sponsor is a health professional, maybe not. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your friend that you love to go into business with. And down the road, after you've gotten your feet wet a little bit, after you've opened up some accounts for other people and know how to create an account and know how to coach somebody to success, then you bring in a health professional. But it doesn't matter where the health professionals are in your business. It doesn't even matter if you sponsored them, right? Maybe you introduced your friend who's been in professional sales before and they have a contact base of health professionals and then they sponsor health professionals. And those health professionals could be five levels below you or 500 levels below you, you still benefit 100% from any volume created by those health professionals. What I'll be sharing with you later is the health professionals because of their built-in patient base and the fact that their patients are going to them looking for wellness options. They have a built-in customer base already looking for the products that we have. They might have 200 customers that buy from them. They might have 400 customers that buy from them every month. So they, one health professional, could actually equate to the type of volume that's generated by 10 to 20 regular unfranchise owners. It's the ultimate leverage, right? But the beautiful thing is, whether you're focused on Nutrimetrics or not, or whether you're focused on motives or not, or whether you're focused on shop financial or not, you still benefit from all of those products sold by anybody in your organization that focuses on those majors, right? So this is really important that we make sure that we understand this as part of the, our attitude and knowledge section is making sure we understand and are plugging into the global meeting training seminar system. This is a whole system of seminars that builds upon the knowledge base. We have everything from your basic business plan overview to very advanced trainings. And by building upon those, you actually learn how to build the business. And how do you build the business? Well, it starts by creating your names list. Who do you know that might be a good candidate for a product? Who do you know that might be looking to make a change in what they do for a living? Who do you know that might want to create a secondary income source so that they could eventually retire early or they could, excuse me, eventually um, pay for their college education for their kids, right? So it could be about products or it could be about um, finding new business partners. So once we create the names list, then we're going to call to start booking appointments. Maybe we're going to do a two on one. What does that mean? Well, if you're not comfortable explaining the business yet, maybe you're a brand new NC, you're going to bring an experienced NC with you as you introduce the first discovery meeting to one of your health professionals. Maybe you're not talking to a health professional. Maybe the first person you talk to is somebody that works uh, works with you and you know that they want to do something different. You're going to invite them to a home business presentation or a group overview or a business lunch, or maybe you're going to invite them to a webinar. It's all just about exposing people to what we offer, whether that be product focused or whether that be business focused. Okay. And then from those in home or one on one or two on one meetings that you have, you invite somebody to an unfranchised business presentation. You show them the big picture of what Market America and um, shop.com have to offer. After that, you go to the meeting after the meeting. Maybe you meet up for tea or coffee after the meeting and you get their questions answered. You figure out when are you going to meet again to follow up with them and see what new questions 
have come into their mind. I'll tell you, when I first was introduced to the unfranchised, um, I met, it was, it was a two-on-one at my friend Steve and Suzanne's house. I was a teacher at the time. Steve worked with me in the building where I taught. Uh, he was also a teacher. And he invited one of his senior business partners to come to his house. We met them at Steve's house. The senior business partner showed my husband, Mark, and I the plan. And we had no idea what we saw. When we left, we were so confused. He asked us if we had any questions. And we had so many questions, we couldn't even figure out how to, how to ask our questions. So when we went home, the next day is when we really started writing down some of our questions. And we had a follow-up meeting booked with Steve and Suzanne. We went back to their house and met them for dinner. And that's when we got all of our questions answered. And we started the next day, right? So sometimes they don't even know at the time of the meeting what their questions are. But if you give them a little bit of time to think about it, uh, a day or two, it doesn't have to be long. I'm not talking months, I'm not talking weeks, but make sure that you have a meeting after the meeting and book a follow-up from there, right? And then from there, you build them into the training system. You get them to go to local seminars where they get to meet more people and see more success stories than the district conference and the regional convention. Then depending on what time of year it is, if it's in the first half of the year or you're going to invite them to come to Greensboro in August. If it's the second half of the year, you're going to invite them to come to Miami for the World Conference, right? You're going to also make sure that after they express interest and they want to learn more, that you get them to the three required trainings that I talked about, the new unfranchise owner training, the basic five training, the ECCT training, right? Or maybe you get them to some uh, university-specific trainings. If there's a Nutrimetrics consultant training coming up, you might want to get them right into that. So let's say you open up an account for a new potential Nutrimetrics consultant and they get started in January. Well, it may be too early for them. You're going to try hard, but if they can't get to Miami in February, then you're going to try to get them to the Nutrimetrics convention that takes place in March. So you just need to have everything in your calendar. Your calendar should have all the big corporate events in it so that when you're sitting with your people, you can see looking out, okay, what's the next, next big event that I'm going to get people to? Because remember, one of your results producing activities is selling tickets. It's not about the ticket. It's about the education that gets, that the people get that streamlines the learning curve, right? What about this meeting after the meeting? Well, that's one of the places where you can sell the tickets. When, when do you have them? It could be after showing the plan as a follow-up. It could be after the UBP. It could be when they open their account. As they're opening their account, you say, we want to make sure that you get your business set off on the right foot. There's an event coming up next month. Here's the ticket. We need to get you there. You want to create a sense of urgency. You can do it right away, right? You can also call back people on your team that haven't been to something in a while and try to get them re-engaged by coming to an event. So always make sure you're promoting your next local, district, regional event, get the people there, and the same thing with your Nutrimetrics events. Now keep in mind too, some of the events are online. We have an online health professional summit coming up. If you're in the process of talking to a potential health professional, you want to make sure you get your people on the online summit. That's free. You don't need a ticket for that, but you still need to get them to register. So you're going to promote it as if it was a ticketed event and make sure that people commit to go. So our world conference is coming up in Miami. You want to make sure that you get um, your tickets booked for that if you don't already have it. Make sure that you book your group rate at the hotel. Uh, I always encourage people to try to stay at the host hotel or as close to it as possible because, you know, in the evenings, there's always a ton of breakout sessions going on. And one of the really great things about attending these events is meeting the people at the meeting after the meeting. There's usually a meeting after the meeting in the lobby of the event. So if you're staying 20, 30 minutes away at the airport, you're probably going to miss out on some of the networking that happens in the lobby after the breakouts. So I'd encourage you to try to stay as close to the host hotel as possible. Keep this in mind, four main result producing activities, using and selling the products, implementing and sharing the shopping annuity, sharing the business, and selling the tickets, getting people to the education. Now, that concludes the attitude and knowledge section of the um, basic five. Now we're going to get into goals and the goal statement section. We're going to go through some of this pretty quickly because some of this you really need to think about outside of this. It's homework for you when you get home. Um, but keep in mind, people that don't have goals fail. Your mind operates like a heat-seeking missile. And when you give it a goal, it's going to help you 
go around any obstacles to get to that goal. I mentioned in the NC training a book recommendation called Psycho Cybernetics. It fits in perfectly with the goal setting section. It also talks a lot about overcoming our personal limitations um, and using the theater of our mind, some um, mental imagery to help us get to our goals. I'm going to encourage you to pick that up for your daily reading as well. You can also listen to it on audio, but this one in particular, because there's a lot of exercises in it, I would recommend actually picking up a copy of the book from your shop.com portal. But when we're talking about creating goals, you need your big goal for your business, but then you also should have a goal for each meeting that you have or each phone call that you have. You shouldn't have a meeting just to have a meeting. The meeting has an, a desired outcome, right? So you want to make sure that you're doing goal planning at every step of the way. Um, if people don't plan to fail, they simply fail to plan. And I'll get calls sometimes from people that say, I have an appointment next week with a health professional. What do I do? My next question for them is, well, what do you want to accomplish in the meeting? And if they can't tell me that, then I know that they're kind of stuck, right? Because they knew they had to get a meeting, but they didn't know what the meeting was for. That doesn't help us. Right? It's not just about having meetings. We need to know, well, what are we trying to do? Well, it's always trying to get to the next meeting, always trying to get to the next meeting, making sure that we're booking a follow-up after each time we meet with somebody, having all these little touch points to build belief with them to help them understand what we have to offer. So you want to make sure that your goals are written down. You want to have broad goals and then break them down into daily goals and action steps. And I'm going to show you how to do that, right? People with that goals have no destination. You, you have this incredible computer in your mind that's like a GPS system. And in order for it to work, it needs two coordinates. It needs to know where you are and where you want to go. If you don't have those two coordinates, coordinates it's not going to get you where you want to go. So what do you need to do to create a goal statement? Well, first of all, you need to define your dreams and define your purpose. Why are you doing this? Why are you starting a business? Why are you working as a Nutrimetrics consultant? Or why did you add Nutrimetrics to your practice if you're implementing as a health professional, right? We need to make sure that we have that big picture and then we are going to break it down. So decide what you want to do. How do you want to live? How do you want to love? What do you want to learn? Do you want to leave a legacy? What do you want to have? Guys, this isn't just about getting a new car. It's not just about having a fancier house. Those types of things don't get people super excited. They might get you a little bit excited. You might get like a little pumped up about it. But for most people, they could live without the new car, right? So what you need to do is you need to think of goals that get you super excited. What would your life look like if you didn't have a mortgage every month? What would your life look like if all of your income that came in every month to you you were able to keep to do something fun with or that inspired you or, or made a difference in the world because you didn't have to pay it to debt every month, right? You want to sit down and think about what is it that, that really lights you up? What gives you goosebumps? Those are the types of things that you want to put on your goal statement. And then you want to decide when do you want it? And you might say, I want it yesterday, right? We need to be realistic. We need to set target dates for the achievement and we need to create little progress checks along the way. And if we don't hit our target, we just need to adjust the date or adjust the goal to be in line with reality. So let's say, for example, you have $100,000 worth of debt and it's just crushing you and you know you have money coming in and as soon as it comes in, it's going back out and you constantly feel this stress of needing to get rid of this debt. Well, the, the idea of getting out of debt might be something that propels you, right? But you need to really think about, okay, how much do I need to bring in? Because if you just start thinking about it, I need to generate $100,000 to pay off that debt. That feels impossible. But if you start thinking about how much do I need to bring in every month to pay that off and snowball it or use shop financial to make sure that it comes down faster, then you can start to get excited about it because you can see, wait, it's not going to take me 30 years to pay that off. I can pay it off in three with the extra income that I generate. When you start getting goosebumps about that, you know you've created the right type of goal. Now, what are you willing to give up or overcome to obtain those goals? Sometimes they're emotional obstacles, fear of what other people think, fear of public speaking. I know it doesn't seem like this. I had a big fear of public speaking when I first started this business. I was a teacher, so everybody thinks, oh, you were comfortable speaking. Well, yeah, I was comfortable speaking to eighth graders who had to listen to me, but talking to adults about business was something completely out of my wheelhouse. I was completely uncomfortable with it. In fact, even teaching was in my wheelhouse. Parents' night was my worst nightmare. I used to hate getting up and talking in front of the parents at parents' night. They didn't have to listen to me like the students did. 
So I had to work on overcoming my fear of public speaking. And the way that I did that was starting small in the homes at home business overviews and then doing a little segment at the UBP, which was called a second look back then, and then doing some little product trainings. And by doing little segments that I could create success with, and the better I got, the more comfortable I got, then the bigger the stages I was able to get on, right? But I had to work through those emotional obstacles. Maybe it's a scheduling obstacle. I get it. I have two small kids at home. I work from home. I work for corporate. I'm building my business. There's lots of things pulling on all of our time. But if we don't actually write it down and put it in our calendar, it's so easy just to put it off and think, I'll get to it tomorrow. No, we can't do that. We wouldn't do that for our jobs. We need to put our business first. Think of the demonstration that JR has done on stage before. I hope that you guys have seen it. The one with the jars and the rocks and the pebbles and the sand and the water, right? Because we all have a certain number of hours in our day. And if we save our business stuff to do at the end of everything else. We don't have time to fit it all in. But if we put our big rocks first, the things we really want to get done first, and we put the big rocks in the jar, then everything else fills in around it, right? What about financial obstacles? I'm a big stickler that we don't really have financial obstacles when it comes to this business because we get paid in two ways. One of them is retail that can be instant and the other is commissions. So sometimes people will say to me, well, I really wanna to go to this training, but I just can't afford it. Okay, that might be true for you right now, but what we can do is create a retail initiative to generate the retail profits to cover your training expenses. It doesn't have to come out of your wallet or your bank account. It could come out of the retail profits from the products that you're generating. So we just need to figure out how are we gonna overcome those obstacles. Now, what do you want? What kind of skills do you want? Who do you wanna be? How many partners do you wanna have? How many customers do you want to have? We can look at how much BV do you want to have coming into your organization each month. We need to set a realistic goal. We need to be flexible and we need to figure out what we're going to overcome. Then we're going to write it down and we're going to read it every single day, at least twice a day. You should be carrying it with you. You, could, you don't even need to have a little piece of paper anymore. You could program it right into your phone. You could have it on the home screen of your phone. Um, and you want to make sure that all you have to do is look at it. You see it every time. Guys, when I first started my business, I, I'm going to show you in uh, some pictures in a couple minutes. I created these huge vision boards and I would schedule into my day three to five sessions where I would sit in front of my vision board and I would just visualize all of the things being done. And then I would do guided meditations. I still do this and I love it. I would do these guided meditations where I see them as if I already have them. And there's something very powerful about that. When you can see it as if it's already done in your mind's eye, you know you're on the right track right? So this is what my very first vision board looked like when my husband and I first started our business, right? We created our own little power line magazine with us on the cover. We had some health goals. This was his side of the board. This was my side of the board. And the middle was like our side of the board, the things that we wanted. And we had this right on the wall directly behind our desk. And as our dreams were achieved, like there's so many things on here. It's amazing. The stuff looking back at this, it kind of reminds me of the movie, The Secret where when um, I think it was John Assaraf pulls out these old vision boards and he's like, oh my gosh, that's my house on my old vision board. I didn't even realize it was there. There's so many things that we achieved on this vision board, but I'm going to give you a little tip. Some of it we didn't achieve in the way we thought that we would. And what do I mean by that? Well, we had put some things on our vision board like traveling all around the country. And when I put it on there, I thought that I needed to have a certain amount in my bank account in order to be able to travel around that country on that way. I, I thought I would need to be a millionaire to be able to travel that way. Well, the next thing you know, I'm in a position where I'm traveling around the country, building my own franchise and having tax write-offs and having people bring me in to, to meet with them. And so I accomplished the travel not, without necessarily having that income that I thought I needed to have it. So what I want you to think about is, do you really need a certain amount to live the type of lifestyle you want? you might be surprised at how little your lifestyle actually costs you, your dream lifestyle actually costs you on a monthly basis, right? Then this is our bigger one. It graduated. Each one of these was four by six sheets. And this was a folding book, right? And this is an older one that we had on here where I love this one. There's, this was before we had kids, right? And so we have all these pictures about living near the beach and being on the water with kids before we even 
had kids. We had all these pictures about places that we wanted to visit. We've been to so many of these places. We we had so many different ideas on here. And we would sit and literally visualize in front of it. So I'm going to encourage you in your goal setting, have fun with this. Create vision boards. Sit in front of them and visualize them coming true for you. That's part of that reprogramming your mind and part of the attitude uh, section that we talked about in the first basic five, the first part of it. Now, you also want to break them down into daily goals. How many calls are you going to make? How many appointments are you going to set? What's the outcome of each call that you want to make? You should have that outcome in mind before you pick up the phone or before you walk into the office. Now, if you need help creating your goal statement, go back to your getting started guide. There's a section in that it breaks down for you exactly what you need to do. And then you can actually figure it out. Once you know Let's say, for example, you put on your vision board, you want to live in a certain type of house, you want to have a certain type of car, you want to travel a certain amount. Do the math. Actually, do your research. Go figure out what kind of, what kind of monthly payment does that house have? What kind of monthly payment does that car have? How much would your dream trip cost you? And figure it out on a monthly basis. How much would you need to live that type of lifestyle? We were shocked, shocked that we were able to do a lot of the things that we were able to do on a monthly income that was significantly less than we thought it was going to be. So this is a really fun exercise to do. And then you can actually break it down and say, okay, how much BV do I need to be generating for my business with my business partners, right? Because it's not just your work, it's the leveraged work of all of your team members in order to create the type of income to afford the type of lifestyle that we wanna be able to create. So you can go through the business plan to get there. Um, you need to earn $78,000 to $187,000 a year. If, if that's where you need to be to get to that dream lifestyle, you need two organizations qualifying every week. Now, you want to get to the point where you're not depending on any one person. So you want to develop four leaders per organization, four people in each line of sponsorship that are go now people. If something happens to one of them, they get sick, they go through a divorce, they have a, a crisis in their life and they have to pull their attention away for a little bit. You don't want that to impact your timeline. So by you continuing to work with your team and building four people in each line of distribution, that creates that solid plan for you. So you can break it down. Break it down into monthly goals. Take that yearly goal, divide it by 12, then divide it by four for your weekly goal, then divide it by five because you do want to give yourself some time to rest, right? Maybe you want to take your weekends off. Maybe you want to um, set your business days to be three days a week. Whatever it is, you can figure it out. If you, if whatever your daily goal is, you're going to break it out to figure that, uh, break it down to figure that all out. And then you're just going to follow the stair steps. You're going to post on social media every day. You're going to listen to your goal, listen to an audio. You're going to read your goal statement. You're going to call a couple of people a day, talk to one to three people. It doesn't even need to be on the phone. It could be through a text message. It could be through social media. It could be through Facebook Messenger. It could be through Instagram. It could be so many different ways, that you're, but you're going to try to book an appointment and add two potential new names to your list. Social media has made this so much easier. We used to actually have to go out of our houses to be able to get these two new names. Now you can do it through Facebook or Instagram, right? If you want to get to $3,600 a week, uh, then how do you do that? You're going to make sure that you show the plan twice a week. You're going to follow up with a prospect. You're going to attend a UBP. You're going to add new, one new customer, and you're going to call your senior business partner. Each daily goal is going to add up to a weekly goal. Each weekly goal is going to add up to the monthly goal. Each monthly goal is then going to add up to your yearly goal. And this is how you do it, guys. This is how you break it down. Uh, it's not as hard as it may seem. Going from zero to $3,600 a week might seem like a big task. But when you break it down into, what do I really need to do for that? Well, I need to read my goal statement. I need to add two names to my list. I need to call to book two to three appointments. And if I do that every week, then by the end of the month, I will have shown the plan about eight times. I will probably, if, if I'm showing the plan to about eight people, I've probably added somebody new to my organization, probably got 10 new customers, and I'm gonna bring them to an event with me. So I'm going to go to a monthly seminar or to a training, All right? Write out your goal statement. I kept two goal statements. I kept one that was very short, just kind of like this one. It's December 31st, 2019. I have no credit card debt. I'm living on the coast of the Carolinas, which I am right now, in a 5,000 square foot brick home. I'm driving a Porsche. Not That's not for me. Vacationing four months out of the year. My marriage is happier without financial pressures. My family and I spend more quality time together and pursue interests we all enjoy. That's something very quick and easy you can say over and over and over again throughout the day. 
I also broke my goal into a much bigger thing that I would write out that this is what my house looks like. It smells like it tastes like it sounds like this is what I see when I'm out on my dock. This is what I hear when I hear my kids playing out on the beach. And I would literally, I had a journal. I still do this. I have this journal that every morning I write out my whole big picture and what it looks like, what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it tastes like. The more of your senses that you can get into it, the more you program that goal into your mind. Guys, your mind can't tell the difference between what's real and imagined. JR talks about this in the reprogramming your mind sections that he does on stage. I want you to think about for a second the last time that you saw a really scary movie. You're watching a movie, you know you're totally safe. You're sitting on the couch in your living room, but you hear it, you see it, you feel it, right? Next thing you know, your heart's racing, you're sweating, you're jumping out of your skin because even though it's imagined and you know it's imagined and you know you're safe, your body responds as if it's real. Same thing happens in goal settings. The more of your senses that you can get involved into writing out your goal statement, the better. So then what you need to do is monitor. Okay, if my goal was to show the plan to eight people over the course of the month, at the end of the month, did I show the plan to eight people? If not, then I need to look at what did I not do or how do I need to adjust this? Because I might not be able to get to the goal that I wanted in the time I wanted to. So maybe I need to be trained more. Maybe I need to consult with my senior business partner to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Um, maybe I need to take the basic five to figure out what am I missing, right? To achieve in your goals, you must believe in yourself and you must take action. This is where listening to those audios every day, doing some affirmations every day can make all the difference, okay? Now we're gonna get into retailing to see where we are time-wise. When we talk about retailing, um, retailing should be a part of your goals, right? You wanna make sure that you have a set number of customers that are producing a set amount of volume for you at a minimum each and every month. And that volume um, creates retail profit. Those retail profits can cover your overhead expenses. Things like your cell phone bill, things like your driving back and forth to trainings, think like gas to get back and forth to trainings, your training tickets, all of that can be covered by your retail profit. I like to think of it as my retail profit is my operating expenses for my business and my commissions are my coconut money, right? That's what allows me to live the lifestyle that I want to, that I want to live. So we want to think about our profit is a very important component of this. If we're just out there trying to expand distribution and leave all of the retail to everybody else, your team duplicates you. So if you don't retail, then you by default don't teach your team to retail, right? Because we teach what we know, we lead where we go. You can't teach something you haven't done yourself. So we all need to focus on retailing. And in this section, we're going to talk about retailing in our own businesses and then how do we create a retail model in a health professional practice, All right? So let's talk about your own business first if you're an NC. What do we do to retail? Well, the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that we know which products we can use personally. Create your shopping annuity if you haven't done this already. Look for what types of products do you already buy in your house by doing your shopping annuity assessment. Do you use shampoo? Do you use conditioner? Do you use laundry detergent? Do you use dish soap, right? Find out which products you're already buying from someone else and shift to buying our products. Now you don't have to do it all at once, right? That might cost you a lot of money that you don't have, but each month try a new product. And what you're going to do is you're going to experience as many of the products as you can. And when you have a positive result with the product, you're going to then share your results with the other people. This is going to help you develop a customer base because when you are excited about a product because you had a good result, you'll then share that information with others. Just like when you see a great movie and you can't help but talk about it, you get other people to go to the movie, but the movie theater doesn't pay you for the people that you sent. In this case, you get a great result with OPC3 or Aloe. You talk about it with somebody that had a similar condition to you. Now they end up trying the product for whatever they wanted to try it for. When they get a great result, they become a repeat customer. Once they've repeated the purchase from you, right, they've bought from you more than one time, now it becomes really easy to sell them a second product, which is called building share of customer. And what ends up happening, and I'm the perfect example of this, when I started taking the product, OPC3 really helped me. It really improved my health. And I started feeling so much better. And people around me, I was really sick. People around me started noticing I had more energy, that I could stay out with people longer, that, that I wasn't sick all the time. 
so they asked me, what are you doing? And I, my answer was literally, it was so technical. I said, I don't know, I take this purple powder I get from Steve and it makes me feel great. That's what I knew about the product. And I ended up sending 12 customers to him in about two weeks. So he calls me up and he says, Brandy, you've sent me 12 customers. You know, really to be successful in this business, you need to only have about 10 or 15 customers. You already have them. These should be your customers. You should look at opening an unfranchised business. So retailing often leads to people wanting to open their own account because when they see the results and they have friends and family that also see the results, then it just makes sense for them to open their own business. So we talk about retailing to recruit. Customers lead to commissions. Um, it's a great, great, great thing. So when we're preparing to retail, you want to choose a product line to specialize, specialize in. If you start off by trying to sell everything to everyone, you will fail. We have too many products. You can't be an expert of all of them, especially when you're first starting out. So pick a handful of products. In fact, when we're talking about health professional offices, we limit their initial launch to three or four products. And we make sure that they get really comfortable talking about three or four products with as many people as possible. That same principle can work with NCs and unfranchise owners as well. Kind of put some blinders on for a little bit when it comes to your retail. Don't try to sell everything to everyone. Pick some products that you love that you've had a really good result with. Create a story about the result that you've had with that product and share that story with others. Now, it is helpful to also use some of the tools that we have, like the home shopping list, and we have sales aids, we have brochures, we have downloads. Um, you wanna make sure that you go to a product training and you, what you'll find is the more product trainings you go to, the more products you'll end up taking and using personally because you'll hear about products and you'll say, I wanna try that product too. Next thing you know, you'll be using a lot of products, but the more products you use, the more stories you have, and guys, stories are what sells. Facts don't sell products. So you could try to learn all the facts you can about a product, but it's not until you have that emotional story that you tell with somebody that you're gonna make a real difference and, and make a sale. So identify which of the company's exclusive brands you want to put into the hands of your customers. Focus on them, learn those products, learn how to tell a story about them, and that's how you're gonna develop your customer base because you're just gonna be sharing your experiences. Sell your story collect and use testimonials. Now, testimonials are a different thing in a health professional's office. A lot of health professionals do not value testimonials. They want to see evidence-based medicine. So when it comes to a health professional, we're going to provide studies to them. Your friends and family probably aren't going to ask for a lot of studies, although they might, but you need to figure out how to create a story and share the testimonial with your customers. With a health professional, unless they ask for a testimonial, I would stick to the study. In either case, if you're gonna be sharing testimonials, please make sure they're grammatically correct. Please make sure there's not a lot of typos in them. Please make sure that the, you know, if somebody uh, has a lot of misspellings in the testimonial and you're trying to share that, it doesn't, look, doesn't really look great. Um, do not make up your own product literature. That could get you and the company in trouble because you might inadvertently make a drug claim about a product. If you say something like OPC3 will help your migraines, as soon as you associate a product with a disease state or a condition, right, you are technically making a drug claim about that product. So we don't talk about how a product cures anybody of anything. We talk about how uh, health and nutrition products in particular can support normal functioning of of structures or functions in the body. And at the NC training, we talk about that. And we have a video that will go onto our YouTube channel soon. It used to be on our Meet On channel. Some of you may know that Meet On is no longer um, uh, up and running. So what we're in the process of right now is moving all of the videos that we had on Meet On to YouTube. And there was one that we had on Deshea. And so when the YouTube channel goes live for our official NC training channel, you want to make sure that you go watch the Deshea, what we can and can't say about products segment. Because you don't want to say that products cure anything, but you can talk about how the products support the body to function properly. As the keys of retailing is building relationships. You know, people hate to be sold but they love to buy. And if they know that a product helped you and they have a similar condition and you've shared your story with them in a non-salesy way, they might want to try the product themselves as well. So there's lots of different videos that are available for you on this, um, on the main Market America channel as well on YouTube, but just make sure that you're paying attention to this. It's all about relationship marketing. You listen, you hear what their need are. People are always complaining. 
Oftentimes they're always complaining about things like not having enough energy, not sleeping well, getting sick all of the time, right? Not being able to lose weight. There's a, I mean, just think about that. How many people do you know right now who complain about Mondays? I'm so exhausted. I need more sleep. How many people talk about, I didn't get any sleep last night. I feel horrible. How many people come into work where, wherever it is that you work with tissue boxes next to them all the time, sniffling and sneezing, and they just don't feel well all the time, right? That's an opportunity. If you're hearing them complain about something, ask them more about it. Ask them if they're willing to do something different. Share a story about how a product helped you without saying it cured you, and then offer to recommend that product to them and you can get it for them if they're interested in it, right? So there's the concept of what's that. You should use your products in a public way. If you are at work and everybody's sneezing, have your bottle of OPC3 out on your desk and have people see you take it. And when they say, what's that? Now you get to bring up your story. Well, you guys are all sick. You guys all seem to have compromised immune systems. I want to be able to support my immune system so I don't end up like you. Something like that um, might be an option. And here's the beautiful thing. We talk about this in the NC training and it applies to health professionals, but it also applies to us as individual unfranchise owners. People don't need to be sold on supplementation. In the last year, in 2017, supplementation was a $43 billion industry. Twice as much is spent on weight loss. Eight in 10 Americans have great uh, conf uh, confidence in dietary supplements. They believe they work. Many of them, their health professionals are recommending them. They might not offer it to them. They might say, go find one. Like your vitamin D levels are low. You need to go get a vitamin D. But People are already buying supplements. They don't need to be sold on it. Greater than 50% of the American population already takes supplements, and that includes everyone you know, right? 50% of everybody you know already takes supplements. That's just the national average. So how do we educate them on the fact that what they may be taking might have artificial chemical dyes, might have chemical synthesized flavoring agents, preservatives, talc, hydrogenated oils. I joke in the MC training about the fact that they made McDonald's take hydrogenated oils out of their French fries, right? They have to use non-hydrogenated oils, but it's okay to be in a health food product. Doesn't make any sense. Talc powder, all these different dyes, hydrogenated palm oil. Why, do we, why does that need to be in a health food product? Same thing in a kid's product. Number one selling multivitamin for kids is Flintstones Complete. Well, look at all the artificial dyes in there. There's clinical studies out there that show that artificial dyes contribute to hyperactivity in children, yet we're putting it in their multivitamin, their health product. It makes no sense. So having a common sense discussion with people about are you already taking supplements? If you are, do you feel a difference? Let's talk about isotonic delivery. Let's talk about binders and fillers. Great idea. And you can do this in a home presentation as well. Have a wine and wellness party at your home. Have a wellness one-on-one, -on -one, uh, 101 seminar at your home. Create an event where you can do a wellness seminar or a weight management over, um, overview in your home. This helps you create a large retail base right away helps also create enough retail profit to either cover all of your opening expenses for your business or your training expenses to get to convention or world conference or your NC training. It also can be a place where you help to train your NCs or your new team members because if you're doing a retailing event in your home for your customers, invite your new unfranchise owners to come and they get to see what you're doing, right? And then when they like it, then you encourage them to schedule one at their home and then they invite their friends. And so the duplication begins to happen where now they're getting their retail expense, um, all of their, their business expenses covered by their retail profit as well. Whatever you set in motion in your business duplicates through your organization. So choose a theme. Do you wanna do Wellness 101? Do you wanna do a beauty event? Look good, feel good, TLS overview. Many of these presentations are available in the downloads area in the back office, or you can talk to your senior business partner and figure out, okay, what are we gonna put together from uh, product symposium slides, for example, if you have somebody that went to product symposium, and what are we going to do in our, for our retailing event? Then you're gonna invite people, either via, via phone or text or email. Let them know what's coming. There's a lot of great, um, Wellness 101 flyers that are going around. You can even go to wellness101.com, which is a distributor. Um, one of the unfranchise owners created that website to help teach other unfranchise owners how to do that seminar. You can go to unlimitedlifestyles.net, which is Lisa Grant's team's website. There's a ton of information on there. Um, you could go to 
uh, gonowresources.com. And there's tons of teams that have put together systems for doing home presentations to create retailing events. Then whoever the speaker is going to be, you edify them, you confirm the attendance of both partners and guests, and you start to prepare. You make sure that you have all the tools that you need. Make sure you've ordered enough samples. Make sure you have mixing materials and cups, product bottles on display, catalogs, giveaways, or door, product, uh, door prizes. You know, how are you going to do the presentation? Are you going to connect the laptop to the TV? Do you need a cable for that? Or can you use AirPlay if the, who, whoever house it is has an Apple TV, for example? What products are gonna be sampled? What kind of order form is there going to be? What kind of packages are you gonna create? Uh, what products are you gonna sell? How are you gonna ask for the sale at the end? Uh, how are you gonna book follow-ups? Make sure that you ask for the sale. I've been to a lot of home in-house wellness seminars. We have an amazing speaker get up and they talk about the products and they never end up asking for the sale. And people walk away, they're like, oh, that was great information. They didn't even know that they were supposed to buy it right there on site. So you want to make sure that you can say, and if there's anything that interested you tonight, we're going to offer 10% off for anybody that buys in the back of the room. And Carol is sitting back there at the desk and Carol is ready to take your order, right? Or give them information about how to order from your website. However, if you just send them to your website to order, the odds of them ordering go way down. It's an emotional purchase. They're excited at the event have them leave with product, right? How do you close a sale? Ask if there's any questions, answer any questions, make sure that people get registered as a preferred customer. You can have somebody do that right there on the spot, on the computer or on an iPad, or you can create a order form where you collect all the information to register them as a preferred customer on the order form and then put them on the website as you go forward from there. Schedule a follow-up with them, sit down and show them all the different products that we have available. I love helping people that are customers of mine understand ShopBuddy, right? I tell them I'm gonna give you a great tool that's gonna to save you money. We'll talk about ShopBuddy in a couple of minutes, but it's so great because when they shop for things they're already shopping for, they earn cash back that they can apply towards their next product order for whatever product they bought from me that night. All right, let's talk a little bit about trial size marketing. This is not in your, the traditional basic five slides. Let me take a drink for a second because I'm like blah, 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 blah. Losing my voice in a few minutes, but um, I was, I had the wonderful privilege of just spending a week in the UK with Pam Torgerson, who's one of our top NCs, great product trainer. She did an incredible presentation on trial size marketing, and I'm going to go through this very quickly with you, but um, Pam's business has completely transformed and new pin levels are being achieved pretty much every week by people using the trial size marketing in her business. And that's just one organization that is utilizing this. But I want you to think about how can you incorporate if you are an NC, this, this isn't necessarily for the HP offices, although there are some HP offices employing trial size marketing, but for the regular NC that wants to grow their um, retail base, using trial size marketing is a great way to increase your own retail business. So you'll notice in these slides, they're not Nutrimetrics branded. <coughs> and the reason why they're not Nutrimetrics branded is we as NCs aren't selling the Nutrimetrics brand. We're selling the consumer line of products, the isotonics line, right? So let's talk about the value of free. If you can give somebody a sample of three of the daily essentials packets, for example, you wanna set the expectation telling them about what the products do, why, why they should take them, but it's really to show them how easy and convenient and great tasting they are. Most people are not going to feel a massive difference in three days. We want to set the expectation. We just want you to understand um, why you need to supplement, why this is a great product, talk about the benefits of the product, and let them get a taste sample and a convenient sample. They may notice more energy. They may notice that they're sleeping better. They may notice a little bit of, you know, just overall more joint fluidity and less, um, I'm not going to be non dechea compliant, met less um, discomfort in their joints, right? So, if you're going to talk about using trial size marketing, you could do something as simple as this. I'm helping with a survey. I can give free trials to Isotonics to 30 people this month. Can you help me out? I'd love for you to be one of my featured people, right? Um, 
you're going to give them three packets with a brochure. You're going to get their email address, their phone number, and their follow-up information, and you're going to share your personal testimonial. I use these products. I have found blah, blah, blah. The reason why I love them so much is blah, blah, blah. You're going to share whatever your story is, not my story, not Sarah's story, <coughs> not your business partner's story, your story. Why do you love taking isotonics, right? You're gonna give away the three packets. You're gonna give them to people that you come into contact with. As long as they agree to give you the email address and fill out all the, the, the survey at the end. So if you go to a barbecue, a home party, if you go anywhere where your friends are, on the soccer field, at the park, at the playground, at daycare, when you're talking to other parents, at the office, on the job, at school, in a meeting, at a networking event, at your coffee shop, your local store owner where you shop, at your dry cleaners, the plumber, the repairman, the electrician, the handyman, the lawn maintenance guy, the computer tech person, the people at your gym, the people at your spin class, yoga class, the people you walk with, right? The people that you see at the dog park, the person that brings you all of your packages. I have one UPS guy and one FedEx guy. The FedEx guy doesn't come here as often. It's mostly UPS. And they're always like, you guys get a lot of packages. It's a perfect avenue to talk to them about, well, we own an online business. Here's one of the products that we feature. I'd love for you to try it. I happen to be giving out a survey of, of thir to 30 people this month. Why not have you be one of the, I'd love to have you be one of the people, right? Something as simple as that. If you go in an Uber, right? Uber people are very entrepreneurial. Most of our unfranchise owners start as customers first. You never know where the conversation can lead if you just start off by offering them a free sample of our daily essentials packets. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Okay. I got a little in there. <laughs> so <laughs> people you play golf with, bowl with, play cards with, are in the same club with, person sitting next to you on the plane, you take yours. I mean, there is, if you go to the Pycnogenal website, there is a monograph on OPC3 and what's called economy class syndrome. You know, when you're on a plane and they talk to you about the importance of moving your feet, doing the, the foot circles and stretching your legs out to try to not have deep vein thrombosis. When you look at Pycnogenal, there's a monograph on there on their website that talks about Pycnogenal and economy class syndrome. And you can look that up. I'm, I'm, but taking OPC3 on a plane is a really smart move because of that. And also because the person next to you is most likely going to say, what's that? And it gives you the opportunity to answer the question. Um, Pam was talking about when we were in the UK, she had uh, given the three day samples to somebody that was at a restaurant that was serving her. She literally opened it up and said to them, I have three packets. I'm giving them out as samples today. I just want to ask you to complete this little survey. Give me your information. I'd love for you to try them. She talked to the person about it. Next thing you know, the person comes back. What is that? I already took one. I feel a little bit more energy. I feel great because there are B vitamins in there, right? So people that are really struggling with energy, that might help them almost immediately. <coughs> I'm helping with a survey. My company's doing a survey and I can give free trials to isotonics to 30 people this month. It's an amazing product. I take it myself. I absolutely love it, love it. And I wouldn't go a day without it. Give your story. Can you help me out? Would you mind giving me some feedback? It's free and there's no obligation to buy. So if you go to the websites that I was talking about earlier, like wellness101.com, you'll find little handouts like this and surveys that people created for their retailing initiative with this. Do you want to try it? It's free. Can you help me out? When the person says, yeah, sure, I'll try it. You say, great, here you go. There are three packets. You just tear the packet and mix it with eight ounces of water and drink. Don't eat anything for 15 or 20 minutes. Here's a brochure that explains more. I'm going to send you an email with a little bit more information. You need to collect the email so that you can follow up with them. But you have to be able to explain the isotonic delivery. Something as simple as it's a powder. You mix it with water. It forms a naturally flavored, pleasant tasting, effervescent nutritional cocktail. Use the same tone and pressure as your body fluids, delivers a high value of percentage of the nutrition to the product to your body within five to 10 minutes. Most people who drink isotonic nutrition feel the difference. When they agree to take the packets, text me your email address so I can send you a short video. It's less than five minutes. It's on wellness101.com. Wellness I have to ask you one or two questions about your thoughts on the product in the video after you complete the free trial. 
I can give you my email address right now or you can text me. Here's my phone number. Can you text it to me? It makes everything easier. What's your phone number? I'll send you a text right now and you can just reply with the email address. This isn't hard, guys. It's really easy. Then you use a tracking sheet. Okay, here's their name. Here's their phone number. Here's their email address. It's the day that you gave them the packets. On day one, you send them a text. On day two, you send them the video. On day three, you follow up with a call. Did they watch the video? You find out if they took the trial for three days and then you, you know, did you like it? Would you like to buy one? And then you schedule a follow up with them. So easy. Call the third day, ask them a few questions. Mary, thanks for trying isotonics and helping me out with the survey. I only have a minute, right? You want to say, I only have a minute because you don't want to get into a long conversation with them. And I just have a quick uh, few questions to put on my report. Did you drink your isotonics each day on an empty stomach? Did you watch the video? Was the video clear in explaining why isotonic solutions deliver more nutrition than tablets and, and capsules? And that's why most people feel the difference. What did you experience? You know, for less than a cup of coffee a day, does it make sense to add an isotonic capable supplement like this to your daily regimen, right? You're asking the question. So what is $3 buy? Pretty much maybe a cup of coffee at Starbucks, you know, if they're getting it black, if they're getting like the pumpkin spice latte in a grande size, it's going to cost them five or six dollars, right? Are they going to buy a dollar menu hamburger from Big Mac uh, or Burger King? A gallon of milk, a pint of beer, a low end beer? You know, people are already spending three dollars on a lot of things that aren't very healthy. And so if we can get them to understand that for less than three dollars a day, like two fifty a day, approximately, you know, they can really help promote their health. If they say no, it's okay. No's are good, right? That means, okay, well, thank you for taking a part of my survey. I really appreciate it. Can I ask you one more question? What's your number one health concern? Do you have any health concerns? Because depending on the answer, it might open up the door to talk to them about a heart health product or aloe juice or digestive enzymes. And then you answer with, I have something that can help you with that. The more no's you get, the closer you are to getting a yes. Because it's all about numbers, guys. It's just a numbers game. That means you're following through, you're committed, you're being consistent, and you're a success story waiting to happen. But there are going to be people out there who love isotonics, and the entire process is about finding those people. If they like it, they're enthusiastic about it, or they give you positive feedback or tell you about their positive results, assume they want the product. Great, you're off to a fantastic start, and you've only taken it for three days. Wait till you see how you feel after 90. Do you like the packets, or would you rather save a little bit money and get the kit with the bottles? I could drop off a few more trial packets for you, or I can drop it off today, depending on what they're getting. So this gives you the opportunity by having these conversations to find out if they have any other health challenges and add on additional products. It allows you to find out if they have anybody else that might benefit from the products and you can get referrals of customers from them. And potentially once they've experienced the products and gotten really great benefit, then maybe they want to be able to open an account and get the product at unfranchised cost. And maybe they want to be able to offer it to their customers as well. Guys, if you do this with you and a person on your left and a person on the right for 30 days, right? And you focus on um, 30 people every month. At the end of 90 days, you and your two business partners would have given out 270 free trials. You probably would have created 81 new customers, 27 per UFO. And that would have generated, because there's $22 of retail profit on each box, $594 in retail profit, right? So what kind of business expenses would be covered with your 594? But then all that BV is going to be accumulating for your commissions and your coconut money. So maybe it's something like, hi Jane, it's Pam with shop.com or isotonics or Nutrimetrics. I noticed you placed another reorder for your daily essentials. Let Jane talk while you listen. I'm so happy you're doing so well with isotonics. The survey was so successful. We're repeating it again this month for the next 30 days. Do you know anyone who would like to have a free trial as well? This is how you get customers from your customers. When they reorder, you can offer to send them a new product. We have other products that come in packets that you could give them a sample of, like Turn Down or Turn Up or the Digestive Enzymes packets or the Women's Health packets or the Anti-Aging packets or the Mocha Tonics, right? If they place an order, you can also give them another sample packet and see if it's something they would try trim with Trim Tea or Trim Cafe as well. But don't just give them a free product. Also give them product education. Give them a brochure. Text them to make sure they get started. Send them a video on that product. Repeat what you've already done in the Daily Essentials Kit and then ask for the sale 
and ask for the referrals. Now, that's, those are some ideas for how to grow your retail business in your unfranchise account. When it comes to the health professionals, how do we create a retail initiative for the HPs? Well, first, we wanna make sure that they're educated on the products. We wanna make sure that we've gone in and done some product training with them. We wanna make sure that we've gone through the practice planning guide with them, that we've done a clinic walkthrough, that we've looked for where are we gonna store products, that we've trained the staff on the products so that they can answer questions. How do you do the clinic walkthrough? Well, this really comes from the NC training. We've all been through this as a patient, right? When, when a patient has an appointment, they drive up to the office, they find a place to park, they walk into the office and they're handed the clipboard. And on the clipboard is a wellness intake form. We're gonna use what's in the practice planning guide in the wellness intake form. We're gonna pull some of the questions, if not the whole thing, and we're gonna add it to their existing wellness intake process. So. What do they already ask patients? Check to make sure that your insurance information is accurate. Has anything changed with your address or your email or your phone number, right? Well, what if we add in a wellness dialogue conversation to the intake form? So now when the patient's filling out the information on the clipboard and they give it back, the person at the staff, the staff member that updates all the information can, um, enter the information and create a preferred customer ID card for the patient so that they know what website to go order the product. But what this also does is prime the patient's mind that the practitioner is going to be talking to them about wellness because they were just asked about wellness. So when they get called back to the office, right, usually what happens is after they fill out the clipboard and turn it back in at the desk, they sit down and they sit in the waiting room and they watch Judge Judy or they watch CNN or they watch the Weather Channel and they get stressed out and they're sitting there waiting in the waiting room and somebody finally opens up the door and calls them, Jane, we're ready for you. And Jane stands up and walks back. And whether it's a nurse, whether it's a medical assistant, whether, it, whether it's a staff member of some sort, most of the time they take them, if this is a traditional medical office, to a, a scale and they put them on the scale and then they take their blood pressure and I talk about this all the time. I don't know why they do it in that order. They should probably take the blood pressure before they put them on the scale and raise the blood pressure because they're all stressed out. But anyways, this is what happens. And then they take them to an exam room and at the exam room, they wait for the practitioner to come. And so we've all experienced this as patients. So we're sitting now in the exam room, listening for the sound of the as the clipboard, clipboard gets pulled off of the wall and the practitioner starts reading through the notes. Well, if we've neutrometricized their intake process, now the practitioner, when they're standing outside of the door before they even see the patient, is gonna be able to see answers to questions like, are you interested in learning about wellness options? Do you already take supplements? Are you interested in weight management? How do you feel about your health today? How do you wanna feel about your health in the future? So they can read through all of this on the clipboard and when they go in to actually dialogue with the patient, they can talk to the patient about how they feel and make their recommendation. Now, when they make the recommendation, they can fill it out on a little nutritional recommendation form that we have on downloads and they can take it to the checkout area where the staff member is going to give them handouts on the product and close the sale tell them we have them available for you to purchase today. Would you like to pay cash or credit with that? And then give them the patient ID card on how to reorder from the website, right? So this entire process is what we teach at the NC training. It's also in the implementation guide, but let's go through a little bit more in detail how this wellness dialogue, right? can help increase retail of the health professionals. Um, we really based this off of the, the old poster in pediatricians offices with the smiley faces and the frowny faces. When the pediatrician would say to a, a child, how do you feel today? You know, kids can't read, so they didn't know, but they could pick out the smiley face or the frowny face. Well, the way that this works is negative five, I feel awful. Positive five, I feel great. Zero is I feel okay, I can't really complain about anything. So you ask the patient, how do you feel today? And they're gonna give you a number on the scale. Usually if they're there for a complaint, they might say, well, I'm not feeling so great. You know, something's bothering me every day. I'm not really sleeping. I don't really have energy. I'm, my libido's low. I, you know, I'm kind of frustrated. You know, maybe that's a negative two or a negative three. Well, how do you want to feel about your health in the future? Well, I'd like to wake up vibrant and energetic and be able to sleep and, you know, be able to, whatever. And they, they, they tell you, uh, I'd like to be a positive three. Well, then the next question is, 
Well, if you're a negative three now and you want to get to a positive three, we need to put together a plan to get you there, right? So this wellness goals dialogue is a great way to introduce products to the patient. And you can narrow it down by saying, if you could improve one thing about your health right now, what would it be? And that helps to narrow down what product to focus on. For more information about how to set up the office, in our Facebook group, we have a ton of product display examples where you can see different practitioners and how they do wellness events and how they have their office on display, what products they have in different parts of their office. You can also ask in the Facebook group, if you have a practitioner that specializes in mental health, what, what types of uh, retail initiatives do you have? Those types of things are all in our Facebook group. You just need to search for it. But no matter whether we're talking about you as the NC increasing your retail or the health professionals looking to increase their retail, we want to make sure that we eventually get the patients or the customers to be able to reorder from our websites. So whether it's our shop.com site for us as NCs or our custom mini website or isotonics.com or motivescosmetics.com or whether it's nutrimetrics.com for our health professionals, we want to make sure that whoever's making the recommendation, be it a staff member in the health professional's office or us for our own sites as NCs, that we know what our sites have that we know what information is available on them, that we look at the science tab and we see what are the features and benefits and we know how to pull up the label. Right? We wanna learn how to use our sites and learn how to promote our sites to our potential customers and our potential patients, right? There is a definite paradigm shift happening where people are switching from brick and mortar to click and order and we see it all the time, right? We're seeing Sears is now going bankrupt, Toys R Us is out of business, you know, big, big companies that have been around for a long time aren't around anymore um, or are going out of business. And it's all because people are shifting to shop online. More and more people are more comfortable shopping online. It takes less time, takes less gas money. Um, now, in some places, the, the shopping scene is the social scene. So there are going to be some people that still want to go to regular stores, but it's not everybody. So we need to be able to realize what do we have at our disposal, not only from our exclusive products, but also our partner store products as well. Online sale, and just as a couple of reminders, whether we're talking about Nutrimetrics products or we're talking about our regular Market America um, isotonic line and consumer line of products, they can only be sold the actual transaction on a website can only be sold on official Market America sites. We should not be creating a cart on our own website unless we're using the APN program and pooling directly the information through the APN from our shop.com site. Um, all, we should be directing our customers to the exclusive websites, whether that's a custom mini website, isotonics.com, tlslim.com, nutrimetrics.com, our global site, motives, TLS, all of them, right? The customer should be checking out on those sites. Now, if you do have a blog, if you do have your own website and you wanna be able to promote products on the site, make sure you look into our APN, it's our affiliate, um, affiliate program site where you can actually take the products onto your site, uh, but it's through one of our apps, so it's still considered an official website. We can't sell our products on sites, um, third-party sites like Amazon and eBay. They should not be sold on any type of auction site or whether it's in the US or anywhere else. Um, and this also includes any other personal websites unless, like I said, you're using the APN or you get specific permission from Market America. You also wanna make sure that you understand how to share information from your website. A lot of times people make the mistake of just trying to copy the address from the address bar in the top of their window. And by doing so, you could lose your cookies, which brings back um, the customer to your own site. So what you wanna do is you wanna log in as a customer to your shop.com site. So you're already logged in and then you wanna to go to the share it button. Now they do often update the website and sometimes Sometimes this will show up on the side. A lot of times you can find it down on the bottom, but you wanna be able to uh, make sure that you always know where to find the link to this page button at the bottom of the website. Um, that makes sure that the customer or potential UFO is connected to your website and doesn't get put into the customer batting rotation and assigned to somebody else. If you're just copying from the top of the page, that is not going to happen, right? 
Now, how many of you frequently check the partner store section of your website? They are adding new partner stores all the time. And you may be shopping from partners already that you're not shopping through from your own site. So I'm going to encourage you to make it a regular habit to go on and search for what stores do we have available as partner stores. You can search by category, you can search by name, you can search from this A to Z listing, you can sort, you can sort the search by who gives the most uh, cash back for your customers, or you know, if there's a specific store on there that you want to find, when you're logged in as an unfranchise owner, it'll show you the IBV values there. So if you want to make sure you get the most IBV out of your purchase, um, you can see that as well when you are logged in with your PPC ID number. That means your personal PC ID number uh, your, when you're logged in as your own customer. Right. You want to also make sure that you check the shop.com marketplace. So if you're searching for products that are on there, you can find great um, instant IBV. I love ShopBuddy. I already mentioned that I have ShopBuddy installed on all browsers on my computer because sometimes I'm in Chrome and sometimes I'm in Firefox and sometimes I'm in Safari. But I love ShopBuddy because it allows me to just go directly to a site that I want to shop from. Let's say I want to buy something from Macy's and I just go to Macy's.com. It's automatically going to pop up and say, Brandy, you can earn IBV from shopping here and we can also apply coupon codes. So it helps me to make sure I get the most savings. I can teach my customers to do this as well. As I mentioned earlier, they can earn cash back that they can then apply towards their products, right? The other thing about ShopBuddy is it does detect if you're getting the best value. So they might be on a website. I did this with my couch. I bought my couch downstairs. It was on the website Wayfair. That's where I found it on Wayfair.com. And I went to purchase it and ShopBuddy came up and said, appliance connection has this at a better deal. I would have never thought to shop at appliance connection for my couch. But because I searched for the couch on my, on my shop buddy, I was able to save like $500 over buying it from the store where I initially found it. They're both partner stores. They both got me IBV, right? But I was able to save $500 because shop buddy detected a better deal. It also will scan through all different types of coupon codes and automatically apply the coupon codes for you. So if you're not using ShopBuddy, you are missing out on some savings and so are your customers. The other thing that's nice about it is if somebody goes to eBay and they, or Amazon and they go to search for one of our products, a little warning will pop up saying, this is, you know, this is not a factory authorized website. So again, you just want to make sure as part of your attitude and knowledge and part of your retailing section, you're familiar with what websites that we have available to us. Now, when we talked about goals, we talked about the fact that you want to make sure you have a goal set out for what is it that your lifestyle is going to cost you? How do you break that down into a monthly amount, a weekly amount, a daily amount of activity, right? But you can also break down your retail goal so that you have a certain amount of BV that you're generating each and every month. Now, at a minimum, a retail, soul, uh, retail sales goal for a new unfranchise owner should be to create 200 BV and 20 IBV from personal use a month and 300 BV and 200 IBV to a base of 10 preferred customers ordering 30 BV and 20 IBV per month. That means you are using 30 BV, I mean, each PC, 30 BV and 20 IBV. Then your total unfranchise owner production is 500 BV and 220 IBV. So as we go through this, you'll see how if you duplicate that in your business with base 10, seven strong, and you have each UFO creating 500 BV a month and 200 IBV a month in both personal and PC use of products, you're going to get to 300 BV um, commissions per month and 300 IBV commissions every other month relatively quickly. This is the foundation of our business. Base 10, seven strong foundation of the business. We create our own retail. We have customers that are buying from us on an ongoing basis. We build share of customer. We expose them to shop buddy and our partner stores and how can they can earn additional cash back that they can use to pay for their own product. And then those BV and IBV banks start flowing up because not only are we doing that, but our team members are doing that and the commissions begin to grow everywhere. Now we can have a minimum mindset or we can have a maximum mindset and it all is dependent on what your goals are. How big are your goals and how fast do you want to get there? 
you want to make sure that you're at least covering the minimum activity requirements depending on your pin level how much have you earned in commissions if you're a brand new one franchise owner and you haven't earned any commissions yet 50 bv and 10 ibv per month per ufo once you've earned your first um, commission check in bv your bv requirement goes up to 100 when you've earned your first fifteen hundred dollars in commissions your bv requirement goes up to 150. now if you're getting ibv checks before you've earned an ibv commission check your requirement is 10 ibv per month when you've gotten your first IBV commission check, it goes up to 20 IBV per month. And when you've completed the pay cycle on your IBV commissions the first time, it goes up to 30 IBV per month. So you wanna make sure you understand what your minimums are based on where you are in a pin level standpoint. But then you wanna translate this into working with your team, what is your monthly goal plus base 10? 200 BV and IBV per UFO, 300 BV and 200 IBV to 10 customers. That's 30 BV, 20 IBV each, right? If you do that, you're going to have a monthly goal with base 10 in BV and IBV only. But when you, once you're going for the shopping annuity and everybody understands that what they're already spending money on, they can buy through the company. Now it's going to grow up to 500 BV and 200 IBV per month per UFO with the same 300 BV and 200 IBV to the 10 customers, right? So depending on where you are in your business, you can really multiply your actions, but whatever it is that you end up doing, remember your team will duplicate. So how do you get to organizational growth with just satisfying the minimum activity requirements? You'll get to $600 in monthly BV commissions and earn $300 in IBV commissions every third month if you're just doing the minimum requirements. But if we add on to that and instead we're looking at uh, base 10, seven strong, now we're at $6,000 in monthly BV and $3,000 in monthly IBV. So our commissions grow up, uh, um, increase significantly as we get our team thinking more maximum mindset instead of minimum mindset. When we look at the shopping annuity, the same number of people on our team with the same number of customers, now we're at $8,400 a month on BV and $6,000 a month on IBV right? You should earn $2,100 a week on BV and $1,500 weekly on IBV if you and your base 10, seven strong is focusing on meeting all the shopping annuity criteria. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about shopping annuity in this training, but if you go to another basic five training, you want to make sure that you go to your local seminars, you want to learn more about the shopping annuity, you will find that if you go from that minimum mindset to the maximum mindset, which is talking about the shopping annuity, your commissions are going to go through the roof. You can go from $700 in average monthly commissions with a minimum mindset to shopping annuity base 10 is 14,000 in average monthly commissions. Now I did mention to you, we would talk to you about the retail model and the amount of retail profit that can be generated by a health professional because a health professional is going to have significantly more than 10 customers that are buying from them every month depending on the size of their practice most health professionals are going to have anywhere from 50 to 250 or more patients buying from them in a month now that might not happen overnight we're going to build that out over a ramp up period of maybe a full year but let's take a look at this example of how that could work for you Let's take a look at a scenario where you have a practice with 5,000 patients, right? Our goal very conservatively is to get 10% of those patients buying product from that practice. Now I've already shared with you that greater than 50% of the American public already takes supplements. So we're being very conservative by getting only 10% to convert to buying what we have their health professionals recommending to them, right? Uh, compared to whatever they're buying at Costco or CVS or Vitamin Shop or wherever it is that they're buying product. So we know that greater than 65% of patients through surveys that we've done for years in Nutrimetrics want wellness alternatives. We're focusing on 10%, which would be 500 patients. Now, if we break this down into the weekly goal, like what I taught you to do in goals, like we're not gonna just focus on finding 500, we're gonna break it down to, well, how many patients do they see per week? How many patients do they see per day? And what's 10% of that? And we'll still get to the same number of 500. So if they see, 25 patients a day, and our goal is 10% participation, that means that they wanna introduce the products to two and a half patients per day to the wellness protocol. Well, two and a half patients per day, let's, let's 
bring that down to two. We're going to have two that buy on Monday. We're going to have two that buy on Tuesday. We're going to have two that buy on Wednesday. We're going to have two that buy on Thursday. We're going to have two that buy on Friday. That means by the end of the week, they had in week one, 10 patients buy a product. In week two, they're going to repeat that and 10 more patients are going to buy. In week three, they're going to repeat that again. 10 more patients are going to buy. In week four, they're going to repeat that. 10 more patients are going to buy. By the time we've completed four weeks or one month, right? A month is actually four and a half weeks, but to keep it simple, in, at the end of four weeks, we will have 40 patients that have purchased, right? Well, these are our monthly orders. So in month two, we're going to repeat two new patients a day. So we're going to have 40 new patients in month two, but the people from month one are going to reorder. So by the end of month two, we're now up to 80 patients that are buying on a monthly basis. The end of month three, right? Did I do that right? 40 in month one, 40 in month two, plus the reorders, that takes it up to 80. In month three, we have another 40. We're going to take it up to 120. Do you see how this starts to begin to build? So let's take a look at what this could look like. If we're just talking about the daily essentials packets, at the end of month one, we had about 80 people purchasing. A month and a half in, if we have 100 people purchasing with $22 of retail profit per box, we're at $2,200 in retail profit a month and a half to two months in. If we're following that sample of, you see 25 patients a day, our goal is 10%, that's two and a half, we're only looking really at two patients per day out of the 25 you see. If we keep everybody on that reorder, right? By the time we're about a month and a half to two months in, the practice will be generating $2,200 a month in retail profit. That makes a difference for a practice. By the time we're five months in, we could be at 250 or 500, you know, depending on how aggressive the practice is. Again, we're only talking about 10% penetration here. That's very, very conservative. We could be generating somewhere between $2,200 and $5,500 in retail profit before we even talk about commissions, right? Now, maybe we want to offer something more than the daily essentials packets. Maybe they want a, a separate option for people that also want to have vitamin D uh, with K2. And maybe they also want to add in, um, you know, an omega-3 or something like that. The more product we add in, the more retail profit on each package, that more that retail profit starts to grow. Now, if we look at adding in the actual commissions associated with that, this is the same example on the top. Let, let's use the 250 patients purchasing. Let's say it took them a full year to get to 250 patients purchasing. Um, no, let's use the, five, the 500 was our goal. So if we're using the 500, that was our goal, 10% participation out of a practice with 5,000 patients, they're going to be earning every month at that level $11,000 in retail profit. But each month, they're going to have 20,000 BV generated. So by the time we look at the retail profit, which is 11,000 times 12 months, that's $132,000 generated in retail profit, plus $20,000 a month in commission split equally on each side is going to help them complete the pay cycle quite regularly. They're going to earn an additional $3,600 in commissions. This is just on their own volume. This happens to be an HP1 account. They haven't added any other partners. As an HP1, they can earn commissions without activating with two business partners. So in this particular example, this practice who completed their goal of 10% penetration has 168,000 annualized between retail profit and commissions. Of that, 36,000 is commissions on their own volume. At this point, they're probably going to be a little bit of believers about the product. And at this point, they might want to upgrade to become an HP executive. And when they upgrade to become an HP executive, now they duplicate this process with a practice on their left and a practice on their right. And now take a look at that. Their volume is going to continue growing because it's not just their 20,000 BV a month being divided on their left and their right side, but they're going to have a partner on the left and a partner on the right that are generating that same type of volume. So do you see how the retail profit can really make a difference for a practice? But as they begin to have that belief because the retail's growing, now they start giving you referrals and now they can create true ongoing income because retail alone is not true ongoing income. They have to continue introducing that product to patients and patients need to keep reordering. But if they start to introduce partners and create leverage and the leverage 
you know, the new practices also have patients purchasing. Now they have ongoing residual income, right? So we can take a look at how we could quickly get a practice to $100,000 a year in just using the daily essentials packets. But we need to look at, okay, how, do, how, many, of, how many practices do we need of different sizes to get to 5,000 and 5,000 BV per week on the daily essentials packets? Do we need two doctors moving 125 a week? Do we need four doctors moving 32 a week, two on each side? Do we need eight doctors moving 16 a week, right? Not all the practices have to get to 500 patients purchasing every month. If you have smaller practices that don't have as large of a patient base, then you just need a few more practices to get you to wherever your retail goal is. So as an NC, you can map this out and you can create a mental image of, okay, I know in order for me to achieve my goal, I need to have this much BV coming up through my organization on my left and on my right. Now the question is, how many unfranchised owners do I need on my left and how many do I need on my right that are doing either the minimums or the maximum right, depending on what you're going to be duplicating, and they're going to duplicate whatever it is that you do in order to create the commissions I want to live the lifestyle I want. So do you see how, whether you're talking about an NC creating a retail business or an HP creating a retail business, you can use retail to fund your business expenses, create new products, and then eventually retail to recruit right? So let's talk a little bit about prospecting, recruiting, and sponsoring. In essence, opening new accounts with new business partners. Now keep in mind, because this is new trimetricized, we're going to talk primarily about health professional accounts and opening health professional accounts, but you don't need to have new trimetrics blinders on when you're growing your business. You might find an, a perfect opportunity to, to work with somebody in the beauty industry. You might find a perfect opportunity to work with somebody in the financial services industry. And just because you're a Nutrametrics consultant or a health professional doesn't mean you should only open accounts for other Nutrametrics consultants and health professionals. You can work with anybody in any of the divisions of our company. And I think it's one of the most exciting things about our company is that we have so many options for so many different people. If we worked with just a health and nutrition company and I come across an amazing potential partner who's not excited about health and nutrition, they probably wouldn't partner with me. But if they're really excited about financial services, they might be a great shop financial consultant or a great mo uh, motives consultant if they're more focused on the beauty industry. So why do we wanna focus on duplicating our efforts and leveraging our time? Because it's the fastest way to help us get to our goals, right? But how do we do that? Where do we start? I'm gonna encourage you, before we even go any further on the slides, I'm gonna encourage you to focus on building your retail because I've already shared with you that most unfranchised owners start as customers first. And as you retail and as you help somebody get a benefit from one of our products, they're going to get excited about it and they're gonna get passionate about it and they're not gonna be able to keep it in. They're gonna end up blabbing about it to somebody else. And the next thing you know, your customer or that health professional's patient is bringing referrals of additional customers or additional patients to the office or new customers to you if we're talking about a regular unfranchise owner. I mentioned Pam Torgerson earlier who had the trial marketing presentation that I stole for this segment, right? Pam's team has grown so quickly in Nutrametrics. They're one of the fastest growing teams in Nutrametrics and they have health professionals all over North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, all over the, the country. And they don't go out and cold call on health professionals. They don't go out and purposefully try to find health professionals to introduce to their business. What they do is focus on teaching each person on the team how to create a retail event. And they invite people that they know that have health challenges to those retail events. And guess what? A lot of the people that show up are people that work in the healthcare field. Because a lot of healthcare professionals they're not really participating in a lot of self-care activities. And as a result, they end up with health challenges. They're so worried about taking care of everybody else, they often forget to take care of themselves. And we have a perfect vehicle for them to address their own health and then be able to share that story uh, of their own health with their patient base. So now getting back to the side, where do we start? Starts with building your names list. Every single one of you should be able to come up with at least 60 to 200 names to put on your initial names list, your resource list. Sarah does an amazing job at the NC training to lead people through an exercise for three minutes. And she gives them only three minutes and has them write down 
Who do you know? So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing right now. Get out a piece of paper. Hopefully you're sitting next to your computer or you're sitting somewhere and you have a piece of paper next to you. If not, if you're on your phone, open up note screen and start typing this out. We're not going to do a full three minutes, but I want you to actually start writing things down right now. Who of your friends have struggled with their health? Who do you know that has headaches? Who do you know that has allergies? Who do you know that's complaining about being tired all the time? Who do you know that talks about not having enough energy? Who do you know that complains that they can't get through their day without coffee or energy drinks? Who do you know that needs to lose weight or wants to lose weight and talks about it? Who do you know that has tried every diet out there and is frustrated because they're still not at their goal weight? Who do you know? And, and I'm, I'm talking to you right now about people that could be potential customers because we're starting there talking about retailing to recruit. And then we'll, we'll go a little bit farther from that. Who do you know that's a chiropractor? Who do you know um, that has people come to them and talk to them about health issues, whether they're a health coach, whether they're a wellness consultant, whether they're a health professional of some type? Who do you know that has skin issues, that, that um, maybe has psoriasis or eczema? And we're not going to treat their diseases, right? But I just want you to put down their names. Where I just want you to start thinking about who do you know that has some sort of health challenge that they've been struggling with and traditional treatment hasn't helped them, right? Think about people that live around you. Think about your family members. Think about your neighbors or your classmates or your coworkers. Think about if you have kids, um, which, which families have health challenges. Think about uh, the kid that misses t-ball practice all the time because they're sick or their, their dad's sick or their mom's sick and can't get them to practice. Um, think about who you know that goes to the gym all the time and, and constantly, like, who's your friend that posts their running map every day on Facebook, like where they, where they you know, their little run tracker uh, on Facebook. Who are the people that you know that are health conscious? right? Who do you know that um, is in your church that talks about health challenges, right? So now that you have the, the list of potential customers, right, you also want to create a list of people that could lead you to those customers. Who do you know that's an accountant? Who do you know that's a financial planner? Who do you know that's an attorney? Who do you know that's a golf pro? Who do you know that works on cars? Who do you know that, you know, we, we can create this list and it, easily could get to 200 people. Who did you invite to your wedding? How many people were at your wedding? How many people were at your kids, um, your kids' wedding? How many people, you know, we could go on and on, but you want to create that names list. And it's not because you're looking to recruit any of them. It's just getting you thinking about who the people you know that could lead to a product sale. Somebody could benefit from our product or somebody that could lead you to somebody that could benefit from the product or somebody that might want a change in their life, right? Then you wanna start qualifying them. Who do you know that has sales or service experience? Who do you know that's a teacher, a trainer, a coach? Who do you know that has tried starting multiple business or has their own business? Who do you know that are people magnets, the social butterflies? Who do you know that has money? Who's lost money? Who's had it and lost it or working to it? Who do you know that's been in uh, all these different direct sales experience. Who do you know that sells essential oils? Who do you know that sells candles? Who do you know that sells bags? Who do you know, who do you know that sells jewelry? Who do you know that sells cleaning products? Who do you know that sells um, financial services? Who do you know that sells life insurance or, or car insurance? Who do you know that sells real estate, right? So hopefully you, you have a list created. And then what you do is you're going to go through and you're going to start to prioritize the list of the first couple people that you're going to reach out to. These are the people that you're going to reach out to with your business partner, if, especially if you're new. You're going to continue to build relationships with everybody on your list. It doesn't have to be just about the business. You could start by sending them a Facebook message or a text message and just said, I was thinking about you the other day. You popped into my head. How are you? Don't need to talk about the business. Don't need to talk about the product, but just, I was thinking about you the other day. You popped into my head. How are you? Create a dialogue with them. If you haven't talked to them in a while, see what's new in their life. What are they doing? Ask them normal questions. What do you do for work? Are you, you know, where do you live? What's new in your life? How are your kids? How is your wife? How is your husband? Right? You just start being a friend. 
so many of us have all of these friends that we've collected on Facebook and we never talk to them. And sometimes they comment on our posts, sometimes they don't. But when you reach out to them through Facebook Messenger, they love it. Or you pick up the phone and you call them, they're like, whoa, what's going on? It doesn't have to be initially to talk about the business. Now you don't want to spend a whole lot of time just with chit chat, getting caught up with people. But guys, the possibilities are endless. And so you can reconnect with people that you haven't talked to in a while. And if you talk to them, add to, you know, write them down that you've talked to them, add two names per day of new people that you think about, you know, social media prospecting, as I was saying, makes it so, so easy. You can Instagram and use new hashtags and then follow hashtags and comment on people's picture. And you like somebody's picture, just be like, Hey, I really like what you're posting. I'd love to connect with you. Let's, and you know, send them a follow request or a friend request on Facebook. A lot of times you can find them on Facebook too, or on Instagram. Some people are just on Instagram now. Some people are only on Facebook, you know, whatever your social media platform is, figure out how to just reconnect with people about it. Not in a spammy way. It's not, hey, I started a new business and I want you to look at it. You need to look at it right away. It's not that. I mean, look at the sample here on the slide. Long time no see, haven't talked to you in a while, just wanted to say hi and catch up. How have you been doing? Guys, that's not hard, right? It doesn't seem weird. It's just, I thought about you. I'd like to catch up. How are you? Because next thing you know, when they answer, they're going to bring up a reason why you're going to jump on the phone with them or you're going to talk to them. Ask questions build relationships. It's not about recruiting. Don't be weird, right? Uh, when you take a look at this slide, it's about your social media posts should be about 80% about you and your family. You are your brand. Only about 20% of your posts. So two out of 10 of your posts should be about a product or about your business or pictures of you at an event or pictures of you giving a presentation. The other 80% is you talking about things that you love, things that you're passionate about, because you are the brand. Before anybody partners with Market America, they partner with you first, right? So you wanna be able to show that you are passionate about what you're doing, that you're happy with life, that, you, that people want to do the same kind of thing that you are doing. They don't even know what the thing is. They don't even need to know what business you're in. If they're posting about being happy and energetic and full of life, people will take notice because they see so many people throughout their day that are not. Posting positive things and really standing out and not complaining about politics and not complaining about how bad the weather is and not complaining about how bad life is really makes you stand out. So you're going to position 80% stuff about you and things that you love and uplifting things and 20% about your business. You also want to be prepared when somebody does ask you, just like you send a message to somebody saying, hey, I thought about you, what's new, you know, what do you do now? You want to have an answer when somebody asks back, what do you do? Because if you ask them, hey, how are you? What are you up to? They're most likely going to ask you back the same question. So you want to have a power statement, you know. I'm a teacher, but what I'm really excited about is the business I started on a part-time basis. And not go into a lot of detail, but just have a little bit about your two-minute commercial. I was sick and tired of living month to month on a salary that never seemed to grow. I started a business to create a second income to take the stress out of the month. I started my unfranchised to establish my college fund. Don't just use one of these canned examples. Actually create your two-minute commercial, your why, right? Most people stop bringing up the business because they're afraid to explain it. There's a lot to explain. Where do you start? Do you start with Nutrimetrics? Do you start with Motives? Do you start with Shop.com? Do you start with the shopping annuity, right? Sometimes people don't know where to start so they don't say anything. Well, what's interesting, one of the things that I've found that's really helped people with that is if you ask the question, what do you do to somebody else, right? They're going to answer and they're going to tell you kind of what they do. And as they're talking, you'll know where to gear the situation. So if you ask somebody, what do you do? And they say, I'm a chiropractor. Then instead of saying, what is it? And talking about the company, you talk about how, hey, I'm, I'm a Nutrimetrics consultant or a wellness consultant. And I work with health professionals just like you, right? And so if you ask the question, it doesn't know, it doesn't so much need to be, what is it? It's more, what do I do? right? Um, and so you want to have an answer. Now, if they say, well, tell me a little bit more about the company. Well, we're a product brokerage and internet marketing company. Have you heard us? 
heard of us, keep it very short, keep it very intriguing. The goal is actually to raise questions. You want them to ask a question back and you want to figure out what their interest levels are. If they say, well, tell me more about that. You know what, it's really hard to explain and I don't have a lot of time right now. Can we get together? What day works for you? I'd love to catch up about a lot of different things. Is it better for you to meet on Tuesday or Monday for coffee, right? Something simple like that. What are some approaches? You'd be great at what I do. This is, this is, I wouldn't do this with a health professional, but if you're talking to a regular on franchise owner, if I could show you a way to help you free up, and this is all based on things they told you. So if somebody's complaining, you know, oh, I'm so sick of work. I just wish I could find something different or I'd love to take a vacation. I'm so drained. Well, if I can show you a way to do that, now you can, you know, book an appointment and you can find out if they're more interested. Have you ever thought about working for yourself? Are you someone that keeps your financial options open? Now, for working with HPs, you can use the NC Getting Started Guide and there's some approach scripts in there. Um, instead of talking about your what is it, we call it your I am, I implement statement. And in your Getting Started Guide, we have a sample worksheet of figuring out what your I am, I implement is, right? So this is creating your Nutrimetrics identity. And depending on who you are, whether you're an NC, a health professional, or a staff member working in a health professional office, your I am, I implement might be a little bit different. It can be something like, I'm a Nutrimetrics consultant. I'm a marketing consultant with Nutrimetrics. I implement customized wellness solutions in health professional offices. Or if you know you're talking to a chiropractor, because when you ask them, what do you do? And they responded with, you know, I'm a, chiro I'm a chiropractic physician. You say, you know, I'm a marketing consultant with Nutrimetrics and help implement customized wellness solutions in chiropractic offices. You can tailor it directly to them. Um, if you're a staff member, you might say, I'm a nurse in Dr. Smith's office and I'm assisting with the implementation of their brand new wellness program. I'm really excited about it. Um, and just something simple. It makes sense for you. If you're a health professional, of course, you're going to still start with being you as the health professional. So if you're a dentist, I'm a dentist with a focus in integrative wellness, right? That's going to probably ask some questions. People are like, oh, what do you mean by integrative wellness? And that's all you're trying to do. It's not about you giving a presentation. It's about you starting a conversation with people. So we wanna make sure that we're creating a dialogue. It's a back and forth. It's not me talking all the time or them talking all the time. It's about us communicating back and forth in a volley. You know, include your special sauce. What is it about you that made you start your business? What is your why? What is it that, that is why would somebody want to work with you, right? We talk about in the NC training, put your why before your I, right? So I'm on a mission to change our country's current sick care system into one of true health care. So to do that, I'm a Nutrimetrics consultant. I implement revenue generating wellness solutions into doctor's offices. Now, if you're trying to get a referral from somebody that you know that's not a health professional, who do you know that wants to make a huge impact in our nation's health? But if you're talking to the chiropractor, right, and you're saying what it is that you do, I'm on a mission to change our country's current sick care system into true health care. So to do that, I'm a Nutrimetrics consultant. I implement re revenue generating wellness solutions into practices just like yours. Tell me a little bit about the wellness services you offer now, right? And then they're going to talk about their wellness services, and it's a perfect way to open the door to the conversation. Again, I've already mentioned, you ask first. When you ask somebody what they do for a living, odds are they're going to turn it around and they're going to ask you what you do. But that's after they've already told you what they do. So now you know how to customize your answer. If you're talking to somebody that you've never met before and you ask them, what do you do? And they start talking about how they're an esthetician or they're a, a makeup artist, you're not going to lead with Nutrimetrics. You're going to lead with motives or personal care, right? But you wouldn't have known that had you not asked them the question. So I want you to think about this and I want you to make sure that, you know, whoever your team leader is, whoever your senior business partner is, ask them to do a call workshop with you. If they haven't done this, right, you can use call workshops. They're so much fun. They take the pressure off because you can get a bunch of people together and you can book appointments. And when you're in you know, safety in numbers, it doesn't feel as scary. Sometimes if you're, you're new and you're sitting down to try to book appointments, that phone feels like it weighs 400 pounds and nobody's there holding you accountable to actually pick up the call and make the call. So you end up not doing it. But if you get together with a group of people and you all start calling together um, in a scheduled setting with the power of positivity and some coaching, somebody along the way to like guide you, right? 
And so maybe the first call doesn't go that great. It's okay. They'll coach you and the second call will go better. It's a great way to create that accountability to hold people to task to make sure that they call to book appointments. And you do feel so much better in safety and numbers. So how can you do call workshops? Well, you can schedule a workshop with all your new people, hold them routinely on the same night of the week. As long as you have two people, you can do it. It doesn't have to be a lot. And you can do them together online, either through Skype or Google or Zoom like we are now, or WeChat, et cetera. We have people doing call workshops all over the place. I know when you participate in Sarah's accountability groups, one of the things that she holds is a call workshop. So you might wanna consider joining Sarah's accountability group if you're finding this interesting. Um, but how do you prepare for it? Well, you bring your names list. You sit down either in a coffee shop or in a home, someplace where it's a little bit quiet. You don't want it to be super loud in the background um, because sometimes it is hard for people to hear you. You want to make sure that you do have a good cell service. That's sometimes hard for me. I live in the country, even though I'm only 20 minutes from Charleston. My cell signal is awful at some of the places around here. So I would actually have to make sure that I'm positioned in a place where I have good cell signal and schedule your options. You know, you want to have things to book people into. So if they express interest, you're not just like, okay, well, yeah, well, let me send you some information. You say, okay, great. Let's get together and I'm available on this day, or I'd love to meet you at this meeting that we have coming up next week. So have everything on your calendar, like I shared with you before, so you know what to invite people to. We actually do the call, start with the most experienced team member first so that they can lead by example. So each person is watching as the first person makes their call, they can hear it, and then all they have to do is duplicate it and repeat it. But you wanna make sure that each team member that's participating in the call workshop actually does their part. Nobody can just sit there and watch. Everybody's gotta do it. It's learning by doing, just like riding a bike. Um, hit, hit some of the key points, just like before when I said, I only have a second, the reason I'm calling is, you, know, you might know the right people, you're gonna edify them. I'd love to get together with coffee for you, with you. You may or may not be interested, either way is fine with me, but can you help me out, right? Simple little things that are key points. Now the conversation might vary a little bit because they might say, you know, how are the kids? You wanna to try to bring them back to the point of the call. I'm just calling you, I thought of you this weekend, I wanna catch up with you. How are things going? You know, you came to mind when I was talking to my friend, Jane, she's really growing this business and you can make it about the person that you're talking to, the edifying, the person that you're inviting them to see with you. Keep it, take some of the, the pressure off. What happens if you get voicemail? What happens if somebody, you know, calls back during a call session? How are you going to handle that? What if a call starts to go too long? You want to bring them back, right? So you want to make sure that you're, you've done a call workshop with somebody very experienced with that. So check with the people on your team and see if you haven't done one yet, ask them to schedule a call workshop with you and make sure that you get people to commit to the event. We've all had people that have canceled on us and it's so frustrating. They don't understand what they're missing out on. They don't understand what you're trying to do. So nail them down. Do you see anything in your schedule between now and then that might pop up and prevent you from keeping our appointment? I know you're, but we're, we're both busy and I just want to make sure this is a solid appointment. Can I count on you to be there? Right? Something like that. Very, very simple. Then once you get their agreement, you're going to book them into a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one -on -one meeting. Maybe you invite them to a home business presentation or an online meeting. Maybe you're going to bring them to a wellness event. And the call workshops don't have to only be about recruiting. They can also be about inviting people to a customer-related event. And remember, retailing to recruiting, you get them to be a customer, you build belief, and then the next step is to show them the business plan. Speaking of which, you need to learn how to show the business plan. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the regular Market America plan because in Nutrimetrics, we talk about this a little bit differently. In Nutrimetrics, we want to make sure we go through the process of having a discovery meeting and doing a proposal meeting and then planning out the implementation and getting them on board a little bit at a time because they don't have an hour to sit down with us in most cases. Most cases, when we're meeting with a health professional, we get five to 15 minute windows. And if you can't explain everything when you're trying to show the plan, you don't explain anything. So instead of trying to sit down with somebody from start to finish and show them the business plan and Nutrimetrics, 
we mapped out this multi-step process of discovery meeting, proposal meeting, implementation meeting, and we're introducing them to concepts about the plan the whole way through. But by the time we've gotten to the implementation planning meeting, now we've built enough of a relationship with them that we can usually get a little bit more time or we can sit down and talk to them about the revenue options and whether they want to be an HP one or an HP executive. But when it comes time to working with individual unfranchised owners, we're going to sit down with them and make sure that they understand. We're going to show them the whole business plan. We're going to make sure that they understand um, the shopping annuity. We're going to literally go through the unfranchised business presentation, or we're going to show them the 23 minute video, or you're going to sit down with them with the flip chart. You also want to make sure that you have, um, you know what other tools are available. You might want to show them some power profiles. If you're talking to a teacher, pull up a power profile of another teacher. Bring an unfranchised owner magazine with you. Show them the annual report. Show them that this is a very viable business with $8 billion in sales. Share with them that About Market America document that I mentioned to you at the beginning in the attitude and knowledge section. Have a few product catalogs around. Sometimes people ask, well, what kinds of products do you sell? And it's really easy to say, well, we sell everything. But that doesn't really answer their question. They want to know if there's something that they believe in that they can sell, right? So we find out what their interests are. We dialogue with them. We maybe have them do a home shopping or a shopping annuity assessment, right? Ask questions and learn about them. Remember the concept of form, family, occupation, recreation, money. Get them talking about the things that bother them, right? And the more excited you are about helping them, the more you show that you care, and the more that you believe in the business and share that with people, the more that they want to partner with you. Because they're not really partnering with the Market America business plan first. They're partnering with you. They get started because they want to work with you and your excitement is what drives them in the beginning. So you want to let them know that you're there to support them, that you're going to be able to explain the system to them. Let them know that some people will be negative. This is really important, really, really important because if you sit down and you show somebody the business plan and they go home and try to explain it themselves, they're going to be asked a whole bunch of questions like, is this multi-level marketing? Is that one of those things? Oh, this must be a scam. You need to be careful of that. And they might totally flake out on you. They might disappear. They might not return your call. So you need to just let them know, you know, this is a very unique business model. And a lot of times people think they know what it is when they hear about it. So if you try to explain it to somebody, I would encourage you not to do that. Like you're saying this to your potential partner. You know, if, if you have somebody that would like to know more about it, I'd be happy to get on a call with them. I'd be happy to meet with them and explain it to them. Uh, because right now, if you don't really know enough to explain it to them in detail, and they might think it's something that it's not, right? So you want to have that conversation with them. It's all about managing expectations. If you don't have that conversation with them and they're excited and they're all like elated and, and, and really excited about getting started and the first person that they talk to is like, wow, that sounds like one of those things. Like that excitement balloon deflates a little bit and it might be enough to scare them. But if you manage the expectations and tell them you're there to support them and you're there to help them talk through some of those things with people, great. Then they feel so much better. And I know I have a slide in this a little bit later on, but I just want to remind you, if you haven't watched the Unfranchised Manifesto from J.R. Reidinger, the founder of the company, of him talking about how we are different than all the other business models out there, I'm going to encourage you to go back and watch that again. It's broken down into two videos um, and you really get a better idea if you haven't seen it yet or haven't seen it in a while of how to explain how we're different from traditional wholesale to retail, how we're different from network marketing companies, and how we're different from multi-level marketing companies. It's really important that you know how to explain that. Um, so once, what do you do after you have a successful appointment, right? You want to make sure that you have a follow-up appointment. Each event is designed to get you to the next event. How many touch points can you have with them to build a relationship and build belief? Build belief in your relationship of working together and build belief in the company. So if it's a successful meeting, a follow-up is booked. If you don't book the follow-up, you failed in getting to that next step. So you need to have your phone out. You need to have your calendar ready. And, you know, we have so many different things. that used to, I used to always carry a planner book. Now I have my planner on my wrist. I can pull up my calendar right here and I will literally like, okay, let's talk about when are we available? Or I'll, if I don't have my phone in my hand, I'll get my phone out and we'll talk about the planner. You want to make sure that you schedule up that follow meeting, schedule that follow up meeting to get their questions answered or take them to the next step until they get started. 
a sense of urgency is critical. I know people's schedules are busy, but ideally you want to have a follow-up meeting with them within two to three days, 48 to 72 hours. After that, you start to lose some of the excitement. And it's not, it's not that they're not excited about it. It's just life starts to get in the way. And all of a sudden they forget how they felt when they saw the business plan. It's an emotional urge at first. And so you want to make sure that you follow up with that to keep that momentum going. If this follow-up appointment is to answer questions, do that. Answer the questions. Try to get them thinking about who they know that would be great for products or who they know that would be great for the business and try to get their people to an event, whether that event be a one-on-one, two-on-one, whether that event be an upcoming local seminar, whether that event be a UBP, whatever is coming up, you should already have it in your calendar and make sure that you get them and try to get them to bring some of their people to that event. If it's to get them started, again, get them and their people to the event, figure out what day they're gonna actually fill out the registration paperwork, and then help them go through the list to prioritize the top 10 possibilities for you to work through with them to get them started. You don't want them calling their top people when they don't know what to say. So you're gonna be the one working with them to get them on either a three-way phone call or a two-on-one appointment. In between appointments, make sure somebody is confirming the next appointment, either via email or text or a phone call. Send them a webinar link, send them the document about Market America, send them some YouTube videos and get them on a three-way phone call. Keep that excitement and momentum going, okay? Make sure that you're being professional. We, we do this in the NC training as well. You wanna make sure that you're talking about the language of Market America in business terms. People don't do a business, right? People build a business, people grow a business, people launch a business, they don't do a business. So when somebody asks you what you do, I do Market America sounds really, really weird, right? So you might say, I'm an unfranchise owner. Uh, you might say, I'm a Nutrametrics consultant. You don't say, I do Nutrametrics, okay? A couple of other things, don't say, I joined Market America. It's not a club. It is a business. So I started my own business. I am a member of Market America. Nope, again, not a club. I own a business. Um, I do Market America. I work for myself. There's a UBP meeting Tuesday night. They have no idea what a UBP meeting is. We have this tendency to talk in alphabet soup and we need to stop and remember that the other people don't know what all of our initials stand for. So, you know, there's a great business overview happening on Tuesday night instead of calling it a UBP to them. Once they are business owners, then they'll understand the acronyms. But in the meantime, let's just talk to them like regular business people and not be weird. We don't want to say, I hit 1,200 and 1,200 and got my first check. If they're new, they have no idea what that means. They're like, well, I don't know what you just said. You're speaking another language. I earned my first commission check. We don't talk about our sponsors. Sponsors are usually something in like a 12-step program. So we talk about my business partner. Um, I want you to meet the people in my upline. No, I want you to meet my senior business partners. Or I want you to meet my business partners. I already have people below me. That sounds really weird, right? So my business is already growing. I already have some partners myself. Something like that is better. The person I'm working with is a national supervising coordinator. Again, just like the acronyms, they have no idea what that means. The person I'm working with has exceeded 10,000 a month in commissions. Now let's talk about this for a second because this is something that's very unique in this industry where people immediately start talking about commissions. Some people might be like, okay, that's weird that you just shared that with me. It's important for them to understand that. But you know, when I was a teacher, nobody would start off the conversation by saying, yes, she's a teacher and she has a master's degree. So she makes $15,000 more a year than this person. Like it's not always normal for people to lead conversation by talking about how much somebody makes. But if it's in the middle of a conversation by saying, you know, they've been really successful in this business and they've achieved a level which indicates that they've earned this much in commissions working part time, now all of a sudden that's slightly different. I don't necessarily want, would lead there. And I've had some people say, you know, it's kind of odd that everybody's going around telling everybody how much everybody makes. Um, it is a key part of what we do. We just, need to recognize that some people might find that a little weird because in the outside world, people don't just shout out what they make on an annual basis or a monthly basis to most other people. Um, when do you want to sign up? When do you want to get in? No, no. When would you like to register your business or when would you like to launch your business? Um, check out my shop.com portal. 
they don't know what a portal is, you know, it might be, are we going to a different dimension? What, you know, are we going to out into space, a black hole? What is that? Um, check out my shop.com site. Um, is this a pyramid? No, it is not a pyramid. Pyramids are illegal. A pyramid pays for recruiting instead of buying based on, uh, being based on product sales. Uh, this is not a pyramid. This is a legitimate business with a proven track record and an A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Every corporation's like, organizational structure could be laid out. You know, CEO at the top, director, you know, vice presidents, directors, middle management, other people. You could take any, you know, uh, superintendent of a school, principals, vice principals, teachers, teachers, aides, any corporate structure could be um, drawn out to look like a pyramid. This is not a pyramid. We do not pay on recruiting. Is this Amway or multi-level marketing? Um, I do find that if you're getting asked those questions, there's usually something that you're saying that's leading people to believe that. So I would ask your senior business partners to, you know, I'd role play with them a little bit to see how you're introducing the business to people. It is not multi-level marketing. Um, but one thing you don't want to do is jump to conclusions about what people feel about multi-level marketing. When I started my business, I was very anti-multi-level marketing because I had seen multiple multi-level marketing companies come through my neighborhood and destroy friendships and destroy marriages and people had garage fulls of product. And um, so when I first saw Market America, I thought it was one of those things. And it, it kept me from looking at the business for a couple of months uh, because I thought I knew what it was. So I had this you know, filter that multi-level marketing was bad. And one of my first appointments when I went out talking to a health professional, I was with one of my senior business partners, Charlie Bear. Some of you might know who he is. He's on the management team now. Um, also director of, he works very closely with Market Australia and director of Shop Financial, um, million dollar club earner, executive director, great, great business partner. Uh, we went out and we were talking to an orthopedic surgeon. It was a lead of one of his other unfranchise owners. And I went with him because this was in the very beginning. We were both trained in Nutrimetrics. And uh, the first question that that doctor asked was, is this multi-level marketing? And my response was, oh, no, we're not multi-level marketing. And the doctor's response was, oh, I, I really like multi-level marketing. And Charlie jumped in very quickly. He was much more experienced than me at the time. And he said, well, then you're going to love this, right? But we want to make sure that we're not taking our filter and projecting it on other people. So asking what's your experience with multi-level marketing um, is very helpful because you can find out whether they're pro or anti multi-level marketing and then tailor your answer to that. We are not multi-level marketing, but we took the best of franchising and networking and eliminated the flaws, right? So here's the slide that I mentioned earlier about the unfranchised manifesto. You do wanna make sure that you are familiar with how to explain how we're different, you know, how is the binomial program different than multi-level marketing? What are some ways to overcome objections? Some people might just say, you know what, I just don't have the time. Acknowledge that. Today, nobody seems to have time. We're all so busy, but that's part of the reason why we need to do something different, right? Can we get together for coffee? I'd love your help, and you might know the right people, even if it's not for you. The income generated by giving me some referrals could help create some more free time. You know, you want to figure out what approach is going to be best for them. If it's going to be the referral approach or if it's going to be the evaluation approach or if it's going to be the direct approach. If they say, I just don't have the money. Well, if you're interested in money is the only thing holding you back, let's do a retail event. I can help you retail products to your customers and we can use the retail to help fund your business and you can get started in the black. We'll do the work for you. You invite the people. We'll run it by a few people you know. And if you find the right people, it's already profitable. There's nothing to try. I have to talk with my spouse. That's a great idea. When would be a good time for us to get together? Again, going back to what I said earlier, if they're brand new and they're trying to explain it and they can't explain it yet, the first question that comes up and they can't answer, they're now going to feel like that, that negative feeling. But if they're with you and they see how you answer it, now it's much better. If you're brand new and somebody asks you, how much money are you earning? Again, that's a weird question. Not too many people ask that, or in my experience, I've not found that too many people ask that. But you could just say, I'm just getting started. I'm on my way. Um, I've already earned retail profit and I'm on my way to earning commissions. If you're not new, initially I was earning retail profits, but now that I'm expanding my team, I'm earning commissions and on my way to achieving my goals, right? Somebody says, let me think about it, right? Great, let's get back together in a couple of days and I'll answer any questions that you came up with. Why don't we get that in the calendar now? Let's schedule it right now. 
One of the best ways to evaluate our business is to attend one of our trainings. While you think about it, let's get you started on some product to try. Do I have to sell anything? No getting around this, guys. If they're afraid of selling or they say, I don't want to sell, they're not the right person to be an unfranchise owner. Maybe they can give you referrals, but they have to understand this is a business, right? And people do love our products and find them very easy to talk about. Sometimes it's helpful to get to the root cause of why are they afraid of selling? Most of the times people think about selling as pushing something on someone that somebody doesn't want, right? Think about when you go into a store and the clerk says to you, can I help you with something? Even if you went in there with a specific item on your mind that you needed to find, what's your answer? It's usually, no, thank you. I'm just looking. People hate to feel sold. So they're afraid of selling. When we explain to people, it's not really about selling. It's just about sharing your experience with products you love. It takes away some of that fear. If they say I'm not interested before seeing the plan, how do they know if they're interested? They don't even know what it is. That was me. I was the same exact way. I wouldn't look at the plan for 10 months. I ran from Steve for 10 months, right? He never approached me about product. So if somebody's not interested in the business, maybe you want to approach them about product. Once I tried the product, then I was much more open to seeing the plan. But saying something like, I wasn't sure if you would be, can we still get together because you might know the right people or you might be interested in one of the products I have and you, I would appreciate your help. If you ask people for help, most people will meet with you for that if they feel like you're not trying to convince them, right? If they still say, I'm not interested. Okay, great. Timing might not be right for you. Do you mind if I stay in touch? Okay, and the last part of the basic five is following up and the ABC pattern. Now, let me just go back for a second. We didn't really talk a lot about, you know, finding health professionals. When we get to the uh, prospecting recruiting part of the basic five in Nutrimetrics, again, you're going to follow the getting started guide in Nutrimetrics. You're going to create your resource list. You're going to go through the scripts in there. We have a ton of scripts in the NC training as well about how to book an appointment for a discovery meeting with the health professional. It's not necessarily about showing them the plan, but it's about finding out what their practice needs and seeing if Nutrimetrics and the products are a good fit for the practice, right? So I'm not interested if they, oh, we already covered that. Um, let's talk about following up now and the ABC pattern. The ABC pattern is so important and following the tools is so important because you want to make sure that you're following the system. Remember the picture I showed you in the attitude and knowledge section about the path to success. Most of the people that get stuck down at the bottom that don't have any success is because they don't actually follow a system. They try to do things on their own. So you want to make sure that you're using the getting started guide and that you duplicate using the getting started guide with all of your people because the getting started guide is going to highlight much of what we talked about tonight. It's going to go through some of the steps and attitude and knowledge and what tools they should be reviewing. It's going to go through goal setting. It's going to go through writing out their power statement of how to talk to people. It's going to go through talking to them about creating their resource list. So if you're using the getting started guide in Market America, or if you're talking about building through Nutrimetrics, the Nutrimetrics getting started guide, it literally takes you step by step through breaking your business down into the monthly goal, weekly goal, daily goal, and then making sure you're tracking that action plan. So you want to make sure you're using the getting started guide and using it with your team, that you're using your own products and generating customers, that you're talking to people about the business twice a week, even if it's not to show them the full plan, that's the goal. But if at least do a discovery meeting or talk to somebody about their needs so that you can create a follow-up to show them the plan. And then continue to attend trainings ongoing. Basic five new one franchise training recommended once a quarter, taking your new people with you. ECCT twice a year, minimum once a year, taking your new people with you. And then specialized trainings like the NC training, which you need to do at least once every two years. We recommend once a year. And as you register new business partners, keep duplicating this process with them and continuing to work with them. Again, you want to make sure for your regular business, you're building in the homes with the ABC pattern. 
You don't want to have people coming to your house all the time because then what will end up is re reverse duplication. Everybody thinks that they need to come to your house and they don't feel comfortable inviting their friends to someone else's house. So you go to your new people's houses, they invite their friends there, their friends are comfortable coming to the new person's house that wouldn't be comfortable coming to your house, right? Buy and sell tickets to the next event, work with the right people. Love your people that are stable and waiting. The people that are walking dead, meaning they're not interested in building the business, but they're using the products, treat them like good customers, right? But really spend your time dedicated with the people that are ready to go now. Those are the people that would build the business with or without you. Those are the people that get all excited and call you telling you that they did something on their own without you having to drag them along to do it. Following up should be consistent with scheduling and planning. I want to make sure that we're following up with customers. When I showed you the trial marketing, we talked about making sure that you're calling and texting them on day one, on day two, and day three, and that you're asking them questions and completing the survey. Even if you're not doing the trial marketing, right, you should be making sure that you call your customers and make sure that they know how to take the product. Call them a couple days later, ask them if they have any questions about the product, ask them what their experience is with the product. You wanna make sure that you're following up with them. If it's a health professional, how does a health professional follow up with their patients about the product? Well, if they're using the wellness goals conversation, they wanna make sure that the next time a patient comes in, they could say, well, last time when you came in, you were a negative three. Today, you're only a negative one. We're making progress. Or if the patient didn't take the advice and didn't try the product and now they're still a negative three, now you can bring it back up again. But we would need to make sure that one way or another, whether we're, whether we're a regular unfranchise owner or a Nutrimetrics consultant or we're a health professional, we have some sort of follow-up in place for our customers. We also wanna make sure that we have follow-up in place for our potential partners. We wanna make sure that we have follow-up potential and follow-up in place for our new partners as well because we don't want to leave them on their own. It's not about, okay, they're opened up, they opened up their account, they registered their business, now they're on their own. No, that's when our real work begins. Whether we're talking about a regular new one franchise owner or a regular HP, once they've launched their business, that's when we really start working with them, right? I want to remind you of a couple of sales statistics that you might find shocking. We teach this about when we're talking about working with health professionals. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect after the first meeting. 25% make a second contact and stop. 12% only make three contacts and stop. 10% make more than three contacts. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second contact. 5% are made on the third contact. 10% are made on the fourth contact. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. But less than 10% of people make more than three. So don't be one of those 90% that don't follow up more than three to five times because the vast majority of people need multiple contacts, multiple approaches before they feel comfortable purchasing something or making a buying decision or doing something like opening an account, right? So follow up is key. We also wanna make sure that we understand how to start a new business partner properly. So make sure you schedule enough time for them to open up their account. Make sure you tell them to bring what they need with them. They should have their driver's license with them. They should have their um, banking information with them or their credit card information. They should figure out whether they wanna open their account as an individual or a business entity. If they're coming in as a business entity, we need to make sure that they have their articles of incorporation a list of principals, directors, and sponsors with their social security numbers. And even if they do come in, uh, open their account as a business entity, register as a business entity, they'll probably use their EIN, but they need to provide their social security number as well. So we need to make sure that we're prepared for that. We need to make sure, okay, are they starting with a fast start kit? or are they buying customized product offerings? In Nutrimetrics, we don't have a fast start kit. So if it's a health professional, which products are they gonna focus on in phase one of their implementation? Keep it narrowed down to three or four products so they don't get overwhelmed by too many choices, right? Then we're gonna educate them about what is auto ship and what are the requirements for auto ship? What is the monthly accrual option? What are the different requirements for that? What is the, um, what is the uh, date when which their auto ship order is going to pool approximately? What is their website going to be named? 
Um, what tickets are they going to buy for the next event? How, how are you going to track the calendar? Make sure you give them appropriate dates. You need to make sure that you know where do you want to place them in the organization? What BDC do you want to attach them to? What's the UFID number plus the extension? Are they going the left or the right, uh, right leg? What is the GMTSS schedule for that person's area? And have a copy of the Getting Started Guide ready for them to fill out. Make sure that you've been through the Getting Started Guide so you know how to fill them out. This is all about duplication. Again, you can't teach what you haven't done, right? There are two ways to register an unfranchised business if it's not a health professional. You can go directly into the registration wizard or you can invite them to partner now. A health professional account cannot be opened through partner now. So if it's going to be a health professional or HP1 account, it would be done through the registration wizard. Now, when you are going through the registration process, use the rep ID and the password received in the welcome email to access the account. Then go into website administration, designate the IBDCs, designate the auto BV placement and the auto IBV placement and create the site name, which cannot be changed for the main site. Then make sure that you spend time reviewing the back office, show them how to order, show them where to find the downloads, show them the help and training section, right? Make sure that they understand where the career manual is. Encourage them as part of their getting started guide task of reading 15 minutes per day to go through the career manual. Show them how to find events in their GMTSS in their area. Show them how to find the unfranchised media um, index. Make sure that they go through and check off the boxes for the commitment and sign it. And continue to develop a relationship um, with them, helping them develop a customer base. So you're going to help them develop the customer base by helping them try products first, right? They're going to replace products they're currently using with branded products by using the shopping advisor or the um, home shopping assessment. Introduce them to new customers through the invite friends tool. Make sure you show them how to share links to their website like I showed you earlier. Schedule a product preview or a wellness 101 or a wine and wellness. Have them create their possibility list. You probably have done that already before they have opened their account. Help them narrow it down to the top 10. Do a call workshop with them. Work through with them how they answer the question of what do you do or what is your company. Help them understand what their reason why is, how to explain it to them. And help them understand the ABC pattern so that they understand that first it starts with one-on-ones, then two-on-ones, then online webinar patterns, right? Help them understand what their options are for introducing people to the business and teach them the importance of the meeting after the meeting, especially to get what's, what's the end goal of every meeting is to get the next appointment booked, right? So we're going to make sure that we help them understand that and we're going to make them help them understand what the ABC pattern is and how we're going to move from home to home. Remember, it never unfolds perfectly. I'm going to encourage you to put down another, um, write down a little note of something else I want you to listen to. I want to make sure that you go to the Unfranchised Media Index and you download and listen to the audio from Kevin Buckman from last year's Southeast Regional, the 2018 Southeast Regional. There is an audio from Kevin Buckman called Building a Leg. I think it's one of the most important trainings on placement that I've ever seen in my history of 14 years with the company. Uh, but Kevin Buckman talks about how to create an organization and where to place people in the business. So again, I'm going to repeat that. Uh, go ahead and make sure that you go into the Unfranchised Media Index, go to the audios, go to Southeast Regional 2018, Kevin Buckman's Building a Leg. Okay. After each meeting, you want to make sure you schedule another meeting to invite prospects to or potential partners to, and always, always, always book the follow-up. Duplication is not a top-down event. It starts at the bottom. We need to generate excitement at the bottom and the people in the middle that are kind of stable and waiting might get excited by all the activity that's happening below them. ABC pattern gives you complete control over your business. It takes all the chance out of it. It takes all the waiting on somebody else's timing in order for you to grow your business. When you focus on growing with duplication through the ABC pattern, it gives you control over the growth and success of your business. So what are the ongoing steps to success? Again, super simple. Use and share the products. You should be doing that anyway. 
Maintain a minimum of 10 customers ordering at least 30 BV and 20 IBV per month. Show the plan twice a week. Continue to work in the homes with the ABC pattern. If you're doing that, that will lead to you opening up two new accounts per quarter and achieving the master UFO program. Remember, master UFO is really about you using the products, you selling the products, you using partner store products, making sure your shopping advisor home assessment is done, and opening one new account. Attend a minimum of one training per month, basic five, new at ECCT, a local, a district, a regional. Attend the marketamericashop.com convention in August and the Greensboro, I mean, convention in Greensboro in August and Miami in February. Duplicate your success by buying and selling tickets. You need, at each event, you should be buying at least three tickets, one for you and one for two new business partners, one on the left of your business and one on the right of the business. And as your business grows, continue to communicate and work with your team. Guys, you have to lead by example. You have to succeed so that other people can realize their dreams. That's really the basis of this. The more that you succeed, the more you give permission for other people to do so. Reminds me of that Marianne Williamson quote, like about shining our light, right? The more we succeed, the more we, pref we uh, allow other people to do so. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, it was exactly three hours, which is what it was scheduled for. We'll have these recordings available. So if you wanna share it with other people, uh, let me just see here if there's um, in the chat, um, lots of just comments, just see if there's any questions. Great, 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 um, great, great, great. Are the slides gonna be available to us? I don't mind putting the slides in the uh, Facebook group. We can certainly do that. Um, and I appreciate everybody joining me today. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you found it valuable. I will post the, or Sarah will post the recording as soon as it's ready. And uh, you guys all have a great night. And we look forward to seeing you at a Nutrimetrics and Market America event soon. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.